Brexit debate, uncut and after show. I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon and join button if you'd like to become a Nathan Oakley 1980 channel member and keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. If you would like to support the channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere and there's also a Ko-Fi Patreon crypto and thanks button in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreons, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon. So, a massive shout of thanks and appreciation to Thomas van der Zander, Canna Bear, Gary Hughes, Measured Flat, Chris Wouters, Mr. Amish, Sensual Goat, Mitch Kennedy, Rod, The Names Burley, Todd Wazzell, Jason Hornsby, Christoph Fournier, Flat Earth Travolta, J Mails 24, Unimento, Iron 26, Endless, Goldie McKinnon, Retro Bill, Level Plane Poem, Michael Kahn, John Kays, Patrick Gunnels, Banter, Mel B. Styles, Harry Blade, Mobile Max 777, Rob W. Dell, West Watson, Unbelievable Productions, Blue Ridge Ranger, Abraham Mohammed, Skeptic 936, Life is Short, Texas Mike, Chow Young Cat, David Wayne Foster, and Dank. So another massive thank you to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. Now I will hand over to whoever is in Discord and Google so you can enjoy their dulcet tones while I set up for today's live show. I'm not used to hearing a, a, a tone like that. Um, can I do something this, about that? No, I'm just not used to hearing ladies that often. Oh, so I, thought like maybe, I thought you meant like a tone tone. <laughs> like if my phone, it makes little, you know. Tell no. Me. You the same person from yesterday? Right. Yeah. Okay, good. You're in the right place. Like I said yesterday, <laughs> just stick around and you will learn. Just don't get offended because QE is QE <laughs> and uh, Nathan is Nathan. That's right. What? That's right. You will get properly educated on what science is and... Um, Everything else that ties into that. I really am interested. I mean, I guess you guys probably have figured this out already about how to talk to some of my close friends or broach the subject, even with strangers. Um, I've got a couple things in my bag, but. Um, yeah, I guess being here helps because you guys you know, think the same. What do you mean, talk to other people about water? Yeah, like not um, feeling so alienated and stuff, or like, yeah. Like, I only know one person in real life who I've known since high school, who's like a, like a flat earther, I guess, say, and uh, I always just tell people I don't believe you, you know. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if we're living on a spinning ball. That's how you usually say it, just because flat earth sounds crazy to people. Normal. Right, but now, right. but now what you have when you're here is you have measurements. Now you, can, you don't have to say that. You just have to say, do you realize that earth is measured flat? But when you say that, make sure you can explain how. And if you stick around this show, you will be able to explain and lay down for somebody how celestial navigation, or just a little bit of a right angle triangle, proves without a shadow of a doubt that Earth is flat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. If I can never get it. Or just listen back to some of the old shows. Even I'd advise you to go when Tent started leaking this out to us in the pre-show a couple of years ago. I mean, a lot of information there. I think I um, the first show I listened to was because of Brian Mullen. And I was trying to... He, he was sort of the person who sort of, you know, opened my eyes, I guess. And then I... I found that, you know, that show you guys did and what happened with that, I don't know what that guy's name was, whatever. I've listened to that show a couple of times. And he was, Brian was sort of the guy I thought my, my friend, who's an engineer, could, 
relate to, you know, and all he did was just, he just immediately jumps to Google to deep, you know, ah, anyways. So that was kind of an old show. I've listened to a lot of shows actually. And, but it's sort of come up again with my friend. So that's why I decided to try to, get a better grasp of it, even though I think I've watched hundreds of hours of videos, and but Nathan's kind of the only person who really, I feel or Nathan and some of you guys as other flat earth debaters um, I don't know who have a well what you get here grasp. is what you get here is very sound it's provable. We don't talk about anything that you can validate. And that's why when I found this channel, I was like, all right, this is it. I didn't even know what science was. I didn't even graduate high school. So it became <laughs> easy for me. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm here. Try Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Feeling better, Nathan? Yeah, I'm all right. Good morning, Jenny. Jenny D, I don't think Good I've morning. seen you before. How are you? You are new, right? Yes, you are. Okay. Hey, welcome. This is because, you know, I have a, I was, Talking with uh, somebody the other day, yesterday, about how do I try to get the names with the, but a lot of you guys come through Nathan's mic, I guess, so um, I don't really know who's talking sometimes. Well, I'm not, I'm on a, I'm on a Discord. People that are on Nathan's panel on a G Plus, they come through Nathan's mic. Yeah, I'm Neil. Is there anywhere to see that? Can you see that on the, I know you're the only voice I do, well, you and Nathan, <laughs> and yeah, go others, but yeah, Neil. We have, um, we but, have also Brian, the Indian guy, you know, with that heavy okay, Indian accent. Indian. Who's the Irish guy? Is that Adam or is that that's John? Brian. That's Brian. Brian. It is Brian. Right. Okay, guy. that's what I thought. Neil, no, did you say Indian? <laughs> <laughs> we do have an Indian guy. Uh, Flat <laughs> Arthur is his name. What? We have, we have an international crowd here. I know. I love this. I mean, the it's place. so. Yeah. I, who is um the like the? I don't want to say Hick, but he's American, and he's is that John? No, that's refracted curvature, John. He's not in a show yeah, anymore because no. he started a job. Started a new job. No, I think I'm thinking of um. Wait, he's a uh, 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 this. I think you were just here. Um, oh, Riley, is it Riley? No, is it Riley Criterion? No, he's Riley, not. Canadian. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about the guy with the, sort of the southern draw Listen, a little bit? Jenny, the, Jenny, which hillbilly are you talking about, Jenny? <laughs> Hillbilly, okay. Yeah, the one, the regular. Well, let's see. I've just, I don't know. I hear he was. I've, I've listened to that Mark Sargent show like five times, but um, because I, I find it's a really, I like that show for some reason. But and you guys go over it and a lot of stuff. And he was in that show. If that helps, he's one. That, he's on the panel. I would call him. He's, I don't know. Um. Can you throw out a name? Um, oh. Forget it. I'll, I'll, I'll get it eventually, I, I guess. He was on a recent Mark Sargent show? No, on, on Nathan's show that is with the title Mark Sargent and whatever. Oh, okay. That's where Mark Sargent was on. Uh, whose show was he on? I don't know. Might have been Witsy, I'm not sure.
No idea. Yeah, that whole Witcher crew over there, they're on a different, they're on a different yeah. um, playing they're field. Different yeah. Yeah. They're pushing Nathan, Nathan, I have a question um, about um, the word geocentricism. I see. Just uh, what your uh, objection is to that word, or I, I sense that you don't. Uh, what was the word? Geocentricism. Geocentric. In my opinion, geocentric still implies globe, but everything spinning around globe, as opposed to globe okay. spinning through the vacuum. But it's still mm -hmm. it's still a globular okay. term. Okay. Is Earth being a globe? Okay. Okay. As far, as far as I understand it, yeah. But I just wanted to say, mm -hmm. uh, Nathan, it was, did you see you had almost 300 likes on Eric's video? I thought that was pretty cool. And I was glad to see Eric shout you out. Yeah, I was really, really pleased because that's yes. the type of video that will drive people here because of the title and the subject matter. Mm -hmm. So having my comment nice and high with 300 likes, which is me saying thanks for the shout out, is excellent. And lots of people, yeah. I say lots, about 50, have come as a result of that comment. Well, as a result of his video and an easy way to find me in the comment section. Nice. Yeah, that was very cool. Do you, do you think uh, at some point in the future you guys would speak or interview maybe each other or like have a have some type of a collaboration or something? Do you think that's well, possible? Yeah. I stopped reaching out to people like Eric. Like when I started doing the debate, excuse me. Um, so I think I reached out to Eric once or twice. I don't get any back from him. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Like I say, I don't, I don't necessarily reach out to Flat Earthers. That's what I did when I was doing Flat Earth UK, and I was interviewing right. everybody that was on the scene. And to my knowledge, the, there isn't. But any... you wouldn't mind. You wouldn't mind if he accepted, like, right? I and don't if see what the benefit talk, would you... be. I mean, other than, I mean, if if I could get on and talk to him about my new book when it comes out, then that would be awesome. <laughs> you know, then there's some benefit to it. <laughs> Um, but beyond that, I mean, it was beneficial back in the day when I was very green and he knew a lot more than I did. Um, that would have been extremely beneficial, but not anymore. So, I mean, obviously I'd talk to Eric DeBay if, if I came across his path. Um, but I'm not going to go out of my way to say, can I interview you? Because I just don't see what the benefit would be to him or me. Yeah, as far as information goes, this is, uh, this is a lot more detailed information. More detailed than what? More detailed than what Eric does. You know, he's like, I hate to say it, he's still kind of on a superficial level when it comes to FE, you know? I'm sure I'd disagree with you, but perhaps that's your perception. Well, does he talk about your still left or anything like that, you know? I, d I don't know. I, like I say, it's. it's not I don't think so, but he, that I he did have a video of what Eric's doing. I mean, back right. in the day, I concerned myself because he was quite detrimental because he was calling everyone shills. So, you know, from that point of view, what he was doing wasn't necessarily great. It was causing a lot of division. But that's 10 years ago. And yeah. for the first couple of years, he probably felt a little bit defensive given the amount of research he'd put in. And then suddenly a load of toss pots, as far as he was concerned, just turned up on the scene and started talking nonsense. So there was a lot of back and forth with the original old guard, higher-ups, if you will, um, yeah. Eric being one of them. So he stopped doing that, though. A couple of years in, he stopped attacking people, stopped making videos, claiming everyone was a shill, and just focused on the topic. And since then, I've warmed him a lot more, I've got to be honest. Yeah, same. Yeah, even with, uh, what's his name, uh, Owen Benjamin. There was like a few years ago, they were supposed to have an, um, I don't know if it's interview or whatever, but Owen oh, Benjamin kind of backed up. I don't know what happened between them, but then it got pretty heated and uh, <laughs> all hope. He turned up. I, I was there for that. Eric turned up. He was in the chat. He was ready to go. There was a pre scheduled time and it never happened. Um, I saw that live. Owen Benjamin just started getting upset with Eric in the chat and never yeah. let him on the show. Yeah, it's like coming yeah. here thinking you're all that. Why do you think you're special? Because you're the king of flat earth. It's Savanier. And then he just started taking the piss out of him. Yeah. 
Owen did not flat earth the after that? Five what happened? To- this is when he was on the yeah. fence. So he was just looking at the subject and yeah. potentially going to debate Eric DeBayer in the in the negative for flat earth at least. But that, that, like I say, and then what transpired. happened after that? David Weiss gets the freaking call with this guy when you should have been the one speaking to Owen Benjamin. Why? I've got no interest in Owen Benjamin. Because David Weiss said, look at, look at David Weiss now. What do you mean? How can you even say that? It's a shame. Yeah, but yesterday on Owen's live stream, he said he's done with Flat Earth, and he pretty much said it was stupid. <laughs> there you go. Uh, he, he, more or less, like, he, he said there's no point in discussing it anymore because he said if people know the truth, it's not a good thing. And then he started saying maybe the globe was designed on purpose because people are stupid and they couldn't handle it. So I don't know. Oh, Owen's being a little weird. That's, That's reverse freaking. That's okay. kind of what I do. I do a little reverse psychology on people. I tell them, don't look into flat earth, whatever you do. Like, because I kind of have a laugh at with them about it first. So, have you heard of that? You know, isn't that ridiculous? And then I tell them not to do it. Because if you tell them to do it, they don't, you know? They just reject it anyway. They're like, hmm, you know, oh, maybe, no, I shouldn't. Ooh, why? You know? But most people can't handle the truth. Like, I think he's right about that, right? Well, lately, I just tell people, hey, you know, if, if it gets heated or if they don't want to talk about it or something like that, I just tell them, hey, look, can we just at least agree on one thing that we all experience, measure, and navigate Earth as flat and stationary? Can we agree to that? And if you want to talk about it, we can talk about it. You realize that's not an agree-disagree subject, right? Uh, when it comes to what I just presented... Can we at least agree that we all experience, measure, and navigate Earth? You know what I mean? At least it's, it's I say it in a way right. that sparks just, the conversation. I'm just trying to instill a well, small alteration yeah. into your tone. There's, it's, it's, when I say it's not agree, disagree, when you invite an opponent to agree with something, there's a suggestion that there's an alternative or that they may not agree. Whereas in this particular instance, it doesn't matter if they agree. Don't invite them to agree with you. Tell them. Right. Wrong, right. If we would have had Owen right. Benjamin, he wouldn't be in this position right now because he would have got a proper education. He did have a, um, just recently also, maybe last few months, he interviewed the Witsit. There you go. I don't know how that, I don't know how that went, but he, he had a Witsit hangout. Those are his right. guys. And he Witsit, probably got, Aaron, he probably got, Shit. That's the camp Eric, uh, not Eric, that's the camp Owen Benjamin is friends with. Or oh, speculation camp, you mean, or? Oh, no, he's always or like, he re- was, he, replace he's, your he's always been tight with Dave Weiss. But this is my point. When you get hooked in with that crew, look at what he's saying now. I'm done with Flat Earth. You get a whole bunch of speculation and nonsense, and you don't get proof. He can't like, say did he for say sure. That? Yeah, I know Earth is flat. Did he say that? I'm going by what this guy just said. That he's done with flat Earth. Yeah, he said that yesterday. He's done with it. He doesn't want to talk about it anymore. And... You can't prove it. Did he say that? Wait, say that again. Did he say you he, cannot he... prove flat Earth? You got a bit of a no, no, for, he didn't uh... say that. He just... Got a bit so of not for Owen Benjamin, have you, Mighty? You sound upset. No, I just want to know if he said that, you know, so we can, you know, take it one step at a time. No, if I, he said said, that, like, I said that because the education he got from them, he can't firmly say, yes, I know where it is flat. Well, he would have okay. got that if he's in this camp. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah. Isn't he just... I didn't realize how massive he got on Rumble. Like, if he has a, a 20 minute live stream, he has 1,500 people in his live chat. So, I kind of, I don't know, I kind of forgot about Owen Benjamin for a while because I don't use a lot of different social media and he's not on YouTube. But I got Rumble and I'm like, well, I guess I'll check him out. And I didn't realize how big his, his live streams got. Yeah, Well, that's sad when somebody's presented with flat earth and 
They never get the proof they need, and they fall off. They fall off the well, edge. Well, he didn't really get didn't back on the ground right. with it. He One just said time. He, he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you go ahead, Jenny. Um, I, I just said he, I don't think he said he's done with it. I think he just doesn't want to talk about it. And I hear him because it's frustrating because like what, you know, doesn't seem like, don't you guys get frustrated that people don't listen? Like even to the science, like I'm only discussing it with one friend right now. And it's like, the know, science. You know? Yeah, but that's I don't a know, I'm sure. there's no science in the nature of the earth as far as what it is. I almost feel like he literally called it retarded yesterday, like flat earth, and said he doesn't want to talk hmm. about it anymore. Not that he's not or doesn't. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, I've only watched I... like five of his live streams in the past year, and it's all been this past week. and. Uh, my opinion on not not that my opinion on him's changed. I just come to realize he doesn't he doesn't Love have him. the same tools that we have here when it when it comes to the That's subject. It. He's got David Weiss. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Not that he's a bad guy. It's just I don't think he's ever spoke to anyone else really, except for Eric DeBay, and he yelled at him and didn't let him on the show. So okay, he didn't let all he didn't let Eric DeBay on. Let's see who he did let on. He spoke to Witsit, and he spoke to Dave Weiss, and now, to him, it's retarded. Now, it could mean that it's retarded to even talk about it anymore. I don't know what you're just telling me, so I have to look into it myself. Did he say it's retarded, Flat Earth, or it's retarded to even talk about it anymore? Why'd you care? Like, like I said, he was just more or less saying it's kind of a useless endeavor because the population of people aren't very smart. And then he was kind of justifying the globe, saying maybe it was put in place on purpose because people couldn't handle the true reality of, you know, where we live. Something to that effect. No. I mean, well, I kind of get what he's saying. Too. So did refracted curvature have that opinion. Meanwhile, but I don't think Eric Dubé is a flat earth guy. It's not like he's a flat earth commentator. Or, yes, he is. You know, he's really he does. What are you talking about? I see, yeah. I, well, like I said, the last couple shows I've watched, he, he mentions it in passing, but mostly it's just he's making fun of celebrities and doing skits on his piano about Joe Biden and Eric stuff. Bay. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, Owen Benjamin. Oh, I was talking about Owen oh, Benjamin that whole time. I sure you did. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Yeah, but even Owen Benjamin. What about that video we put out? With gas pressure, was it? Weren't you in that, Nathan? I don't know. You don't know, but I do. He put out a video which featured you breaking down gas pressure without containment. You even played it on your show. Yeah. So what? Five years, six years after some of these arguments come out, they eventually filter their way up to people like Owen Benjamin. Right. Takes yeah. some time, doesn't it? Half the time, it's because the people around us at the outset of these new arguments, when they are new, say that's not a good argument, and they're on our own side. You're like, okay, I don't really understand the psychology of what goes on in this arena, in terms of people who claim they want a silver bullet, get it, and then say that's not a silver bullet, and then five years later will be parroting it as part of their standard rhetoric, but initially they'll brace against it. Well, I didn't, mm -hmm. this is the most, this is the most that it's something that's come out from here has been fought against so hard by supposed flat earthers themselves. Like, i never seen anything like this. Yeah, it's because it's the end, Neil. When you point out Earth's measured flat, that is the end. Yep. And they like to argue. Right? Is that what it is? They like yeah, to argue yeah. for eight hours? Maybe. You can still have a show. I think some people are just perverted and like to sh shatter the importance of a point that you've worked very hard on, just for their own gratification. Other people are too stupid to understand it, and it'll take 
10 attempts for them to actually understand the argument. And before they do, they'd rather just decry it because it's easier. Others decry it out of jealousy. Some maybe decry it because they're so ball-centric that they just must. That's the fairly standard uh, response that we get to almost anything we put out. But, you know, so what? <laughs> when it comes to stuff that we're covering at the moment, it is what it is. It's not debatable. It's not a question of, I need you to be convinced this is how navigation's done. This is how navigation is done. It's flat. There's no ambiguity. There's no ifs, buts, or maybes. If they try and get it to work on a sphere, they use it dangling below a flat plane that they're actually measuring that isn't the ground. So it doesn't work on a globe. If you try and make it work on a globe, you can imply you get angles off a dangling dingleberry that won't give you any ground positions, and then take that angle you didn't measure off the ground and put it in hell to get it to work on a flat ground in hell on a plane. Now, this is nonsense. Now, for the, for the people who are new to it, they might go, it's too easy, if they're intelligent, or I don't understand, if they're too stupid. But like I say, five years down the line, people will appreciate what they do like they do now about science and gas pressure and things of that nature that we've been debating about for years. Well, the thing is, you had that guy Steve on a few weeks ago. He's always active in the chat, and he finally came on. And I got him to admit when I said, well, how do you get an elevation angle from the curved baseline? He said you don't, all right? But then you got this guy yesterday that was on the pre-show and part of the, the, um, you know, the first part of the live show, and he was saying that you can. So which one is it? You can or you can't. I say you can't because it's all from a flat baseline. Otherwise, you ain't getting no measurements. At that point, Neil, you just tell them to go argue with each other. You know, tell them to yeah, settle that down for usually does. It makes no because it's guys... just not worth getting aggravated. Sorry, Nate, go ahead. That's all right. The guy, the guy who's denying it is denying the base premise for his own religion of a globe. The guy who says yes understands that Earth is measured flat. Uh, with this argument, they only have two options. There's only two outs. Deny what is fundamentally done. Not up for discussion. Not debatable, not arguable. You can deny that. In which case, you deny the base premise of your globe religion because those are the measurements for everyone. Not just because they're flat earth that we claim them, they use them too. So they can deny their own base premise or accept that it's measured flat and then attempt to keep going, which here they won't get the opportunity to. It's welcome to flat earth. You've measured it flat. That's it. That was your starting point. Do we need anything else? No. You can extrapolate out from these flat earth measurements all you like to give yourself a globe, but it isn't the measurements. The measurements are flat for everyone. Yeah, otherwise you wouldn't have any measurements. How they don't, would you get them? Not otherwise they would. They don't have any measurements if they deny the flat measurements that we put to them currently. That is the basis of their religion. No, I mean any measurements at all. You can't. Oh, the Danny Faulkner approach. The Danny Faulkner, we don't need any measurements approach. <laughs> yeah, that goes down well. It's like, it's, uh, when they talk about it's the, the simplest on, argument and it's the most the... effective. Well, holy shit. And that, that's the problem. It's not since, like, for like the Dave Weisses and Witsits of the world, it's not sensational enough. And their audience doesn't like the measured flat argument because there's no zing to it. Like, there's no alien replacement and and stuff like that. So a lot of people just get, I think they get bored with it when they hear it. They go, oh, that's not exciting. Oh, but I hate to say, a, but I think that's... The living in a parallel universe where adverts change. Very exciting. Hold on. Oh, like you what know Dave Weiss like about to say, the you know, like, My freaking you know, like when Dave working. Weiss starts talking... Yeah. Your mic's always usually working. <laughs> I think that's why Dave Weiss gets a lot of uh, attention from people because he has a complete replacement for extraterrestrials. Like, you know, when he, he, he goes on his little spiel about aliens and he goes, well, extra terra, that means extra land. That means they come from the ice wall. And it's just, 
you know, some people get really excited about that stuff. Who cares? What I was saying was, even when you're talking oh, about the I mean, heights of Mount, how you're going to get them? That right alone, right there, you're getting them off a flat plane. Otherwise, you're not getting any heights of anything. Yeah. Yeah, we understand that. But I think a lot of flat earth believers go, well, the globe position is, is it's so big, it's flat. So what's the difference? And I think that's how a lot of flat earthers who are ether people, they think of it like that. Probably. I don't know. Well, that's the problem right there. <laughs> it's it, it seems like flat earthers. Time. It's been said, hold on. It's been said from my own side that this argument is detrimental to flat earth. I've heard a yeah. prominent flat earther say that. Supposed prominent flat earther. The winning argument well, is if you detrimental. Just measured flat, if you just say it's measured flat, like then how are you going to replace aliens and ET and stuff? You're not with that statement. Therefore, they don't like it. Yeah, you can understand it's measured flat, which is kind of mundane and not up for discussion or debate and accepted on all sides if you want to accept the measurements and extrapolations of a globe because that's where their measurements come from. Alternatively, you can offer them the ability to perceive that they might be a little bit of God. Dealing with hippies, that's the problem. Yeah, that's what it comes down to, self-worship. People want to replace the ancient alien nonsense that they had when they were watching mainstream TV. Well, what am I going to watch now? I haven't got any ancient aliens. What's that? Antarctic ice walls? Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> Ether? Ooh, that sounds good. Give me some of those good vibrations. Yep. There could be civilizations on the other side of the ice wall with a thousand years worth of technology that's oh. like a thousand years further than ours. You know, that's what it comes down to. That's what people want. I mean to say that beyond the ice silly. wall, there could be an explanation for the antiquitech before the last wipeout of the entire civilization and world. Oh, wow, that sounds amazing. Tell me that's more. what I thought when I first got into the subject. I was really excited about stuff like that because I'm like, okay, if there's not going to be aliens in different worlds, there's got to be, like, instead of just different worlds in space, there's different worlds beyond the ice wall. Like, that's what it, it's, a, it's, a outer, it's outer space replacement. Just an infinite Earth that continues on for billions and billions of square miles. And now we know why Owen Benjamin said this is stupid. <laughs> I found every little tangential subject to Flat Earth irritating when I first got here. Almost everybody and what they discussed annoyed me. Because it was all nonsense <laughs> and it really irritated me. Clone centers, you say? Taylor Swift? Whole bunch of them? Replicated? Wow. Well, you know, Taylor Swift went to Antarctica, so you know what that means. She's an alien. Clone. <laughs> yeah, you name it. There's all manner of nonsense that's been attached at the hip to Flat Earth. Mandela, ice walls, aliens, clone centers... What, lizard people, Freemasonry, Hidden Hand in general, you name it, all kinds of conspiratorial garbage gets ascribed to this subject. None of it relevant. All of it custom designed to make us all look stupid. but sim simultaneously titillate the masses. Yeah, but they can never make us look stupid. Can make them all, all the other characters look stupid, but they can never 
make us look stupid. Irrelevant anyway. Who cares what I look like as an individual? If I'm dressed like a complete clown with giant shoes and a curly wig, and I tell you Earth's measured flat, does it matter? No. Well, I think appearance has something to do with it because if you got a clown in the corner saying Earth is measured flat and he's got the big floppy clown shoes on and a big red nose, come on, who's going to pay attention to him? My point is it doesn't affect the information. People's perception of information based on credibility is their own issue. That's a flaw. Assess the information at face value, validate it, Check it out. Do as much research as you can. Don't go, is this person? Blah, 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 blah. Insert nonsense here that has no relevance to the data. Who cares? Don't shoot the messenger. Then, then again, I got I to gotta rebut myself right now. Because Noah must have sounded like a maniac preaching for 120 years that water's going to come from the sky and flood the earth. He was telling the truth, wasn't he? <laughs> Water does generally come from the sky, yes. Not then it didn't. Not up until that point it didn't. It came from the ground. According to scripture. If you, if you don't believe scripture, then, you know, then just throw it out. But according to scripture, it, had, it didn't rain yet. So they thought this guy's a maniac. Until the water started coming down and coming up and coming from all sides. And his whole family went in safe, and when that door was closed, nobody else can get in. They knew it was real then. Okie dokie. Anybody Same thing anything? with John the Baptist, right? They thought John the Baptist was a madman because he was eating wild honey and locust and talking about this messiah that was coming anybody got a video they want to cover today Nathan I can look back for that one uh, that I suggested like a week ago ah yes that'd be brilliant yes please yeah in a couple of minutes Happy 4th of July. Oh, happy 4th, guys. Nathan, happy 4th of July. You guys celebrating over there? No. Doesn't mean anything to us, Neil. Sorry. Yeah, it does. It's like those little, those little uh, Americans over there trying to declare their independence. Which that's a whole other story we can get into. No, we call Fourth of July. We never get free for anyone. No, we call Fourth of July. Little brothers crying. No, we call it Thursday. Or treason day. <laughs> and wait, wait a second. And if next year it's on Friday, just call it Friday. Yeah. I was always interested in how they taught that in the schools in England. They didn't. No, 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 wait a second. You're telling me that America was part of England and they never talk about, and they never taught us anything about how they declared their independence and, and fought a war. You just didn't, I wanted to know what they taught on your end. Tell me what they taught you in an American school about the gunpowder plot. Yeah. What did they What did they teach you well, about the gun, gunpowder plot in England? They taught us about 
We were getting taxation without representation. They taught us about a Boston Tea Party where the colonists had enough. And then by 4th of July, they were declaring their independence from the eerie tyranny of England. Yes, thank you. So would you know about the gunpowder plot here in England? Is that a familiar term that they taught children about here in England in school? No, but it would have been taught if England was part of America and England broke away from America. Yeah, and if my mother had balls, she'd be my father. So there was nothing taught about how the Revolutionary War. That's what you're telling me. I'm telling you it's not relevant to us because it's not our country. Like, the gunpowder plot isn't relevant to you. So you, you, you're not going to teach American kids about it because who cares? Holy cow, but it was part. That's the whole thing. It was, in, according to history, it was part of England. Okay. It's like some tattered old car that you sell off. You don't care about it once it's gone. It's apparently all to do with the sun, isn't it, that 4th of July? So you it's want me to believe position. that a bunch of colonists took on a well a well oiled machine like England? that had a great navy, and we won? Really? I don't believe history. Hmm. All right, thank you for sending that video. <laughs> yeah, I didn't watch it, so I don't know anything about it. But it's from this month. Oh, you haven't watched it? Oh, okay. No, um, man. <laughs> Just look for fresh stuff that could be worth a review. Okay. And this was one of them. Uh, we'll have a look. No expectations. Yeah. Hey, Nathan. Come again? Hey, any idea when you might... Sorry, any idea when you might want to go on uh, Killer's podcast? Depends how long the book takes. As you know, it's going through a rewrite process at the moment, and you're partially involved in that. So you can see, you can probably gauge as well as I how long that's going to take. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. mean, I would hope it will be done in a month. By the not by the end, yeah, by the end of the month. But if it spills over into August, so be it. Yeah, as long as it gets done right. Yeah, a month or two. I mean, preemptively, I've got in touch with these people, so I've got emails ready to go. So that once, as soon as it is done, I can just bosh them out and go, do you remember when I contacted you a month or so ago and said I wanted to get you a voucher code for a free copy so you can have a look at it? Well, it's not published yet, but here's the voucher code so you can go into Amazon and get a copy and it'll be at 100% discount. Go and get it, read it, and then have me on your show and interview me. But obviously I can't do that until it's done. But what I will do in the meantime, and if Killer Priest is dead, dead keen, if you have been in touch, I don't know, um, then the publisher said, look, there's going to be sections that are done that are completely you know, fine, edited and whatnot. And pre-publication, you can go out with those and give people a little taster. This is uh, a section from the book. So you go out and say, well, just preemptively, I'm going to be publishing a book in the next, I don't know, two weeks, say, if in a fortnight I do one of these. And here's an excerpt from it. And I'll read it out. And people will get a gist of what the book will be like and ready to be, you know, primed to buy it when it comes out a couple of weeks after that. So if he's said mm. keen, there is something that the publisher's already got in his back pocket ready if, if that is the case. Because originally when I contacted them, I'm like, oh, this should be a week or two. And now it's turned into a month or two. So, yeah, it's just one of those. Hopefully that answers you. Yeah. All right, cool. 
Cool beans. What you be, uh, yesterday? Were you listening in? I didn't get a rise out. Yeah. Of you. I took the Mickey out of you a couple of times, and I didn't get any rises out. Of you, so I assume you were away from your mic. No, I was listening, but sometimes I don't have the audio to, and I'd rather not interrupt. Even when we're taking the Mickey out of you. I heard. I heard. Oh, you did. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. It wasn't a wasted joke. <laughs> Anywho, how do you think it's going? Because it's hard. While I'm doing it, I'm just very stressed. I've got what I consider to be an end product. And then everyone's got their teeth into it and said, this needs adjusting. And I know it's part of the process, but it's just incredibly stressful. Mm -hmm. But how do you think it's going? Well, it's going exactly the way uh, something like that would go. Um, Because you always think that, you know, your first draft is the best draft. And then there are like so many after that. And then when the work is finally finished, you're like, wow, I didn't, I had no idea we were going to get here, but I'm glad we did because it was a very arduous and, and annoying process. But, you know, ultimately when an artist shares his work and has to do that, that's a process that you have to go through and you get to the end and, and, and you're happy about it. Yeah, oh, this yeah. Is fourth draft. It didn't take uh it didn't it didn't take uh as long as the initial uh you know day we got together, so Well that's the thing. It's been months of writing with assistance and the initial process to get it into a skeleton form, because that as it's turned out what I was happy with. Everyone else is like, no, this this word needs to be changed from and changed to to or whatever the correction is. You know, there's subtle things in there that I've got wrong because you, when you're rattling out, dictating it into a microphone and then it's being typed up and then you're going through it step by step and moving things around, you just miss things. And as um, uh, I don't want to mention who specifically that said it, Oh, I think I can say it. So when Tenth Man was looking at it, he was saying, well, if there's even the slightest inaccuracy in this book, you'll be pounced on. So as much as it's frustrating, yes, you could just bosh it out now and don't worry about it, but people will read it. And if they're on our opposing side, they're going to be looking for something to get the teeth into. So if you don't go through it with a fine tooth comb and dot every I and cross every T, um, someone's going to get hold of it and go, ah, look, the implications of this are enormous. You made a spelling error. or you know, Not that there's going to be any spelling errors, but you know what I mean. To spell it here. Yeah. Something ridiculous like that. Well, I hope now, Nathan, you can realise the, the, the pressure I've been under over the last few years, putting pen to paper, writing poems for the show. Now you can finally <laughs> yes, realise. I'm, I'm sure it's just <laughs> stressful. Whatever it's been, six months worth of work doing this. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> it's incredibly stressful. I'm not just saying that. It is. Mainly through time constraints. I'm sure you've heard me say on many of the shows that I just don't have enough hours in the day. So to incorporate a major project into a life that doesn't have enough hours in the day has just meant that I get less and less sleep and occasionally get ill. That's the bottom line. Mm. But there's always something else, huh? You know, before this, it was the computer saga. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad I can do it. If it, if the computer wasn't functioning correctly, and that was purely down to one of my patrons. Now, I'm not going to moan at the original guy because it's not his fault that the computer he originally purchased for a lot of money didn't function correctly. But at one point, one of my patrons stepped in and went, how much will it cost to just fix this? I went to my computer guy, he comes on now, actually, click OK Computers, and said... What what will we need to just make this work correctly? And he w went and got a list of parts. I checked it and went, okay, I'll send that out to the guy. If he, you know, if he takes a sharp, sharp intake of breath, it won't be fixed. But it, but he didn't. He just dropped the entirety of the amount on me and went, go and buy it all. So I did. I just immediately transferred the money to Craig and went, order all of it. And he did. And it came back and worked. Now, as it happens, <laughs> by just pure chance, the, the chip that replaced it, has ended up being one of those chips in a range of chips that the manufacturer has pushed to its absolute bloody limit. And you end up with silicon degradation, which I'm definitely suffering from. So over time, the silicon's degrading, which is just, again, one of those annoying things. 
But it's so much more different to constant black screens, computer crashes during the middle of live streams, reboots, constant testing for for months, if not years on end. And you can't, you know, that's taking up all your time and you're up till three in the morning and getting two or three hours sleep before the kids get up. Um, but if that was still the case, there's absolutely no way I could have written a book. Just absolutely no way. Um, whereas the fact that I can actually do that is, is, is like a direct one-for-one -one substitution. So you know, like, you, like you say, you replace one stressful thing with another. <laughs> Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. You actually have a happy Fourth of July. To whoever celebrates. Oh yes, I completely forgot yeah. because it has no relevance here in the UK. Happy Fourth of July. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on swiftly. Will people? What do people do on the Fourth of July? They have a day off work. Barbecue, yeah, grill, works. eat a lot of food, set off fireworks, and get drunk. That didn't answer me. my question. So, do people have a day off work? Yes, yes. it's a national holiday. A yes, national ah, holiday. national holiday. So, there's a good chance that people who may not typically be in front of their computer or have the potential to be in front of their computer might be in front of their computer because they're not at work today. So, although I've already done the call to action in the last twenty seconds in the intro, uh, please share the show. It'd be great to have a, a nice stonking audience today if we've got a whole bunch of people that potentially could be tuning in. I know it's early in the states currently. Nevertheless, smash that share button. We do actually have a video to cover, although we're all covering it blind. That is to say, Mush, when he shared it, said, I haven't actually covered this video, uh, as in watched it. <laughs> so we'll find out if that's a good layer. Go ahead. I did glance through it right now while you guys were speaking, while you were talking to Eli, and uh, it looks like it's 2015 arguments, but um, it's still, my, yeah. might be worth it. What's earlier. new there? <laughs> yeah, well, so, <laughs> What we call 2015 arguments are realistically the culmination of about 300 years worth of globe garbage derived from flat earth measurements. So nothing's ever going to change. What we call 2015, i.e. the start of our endeavour into flat earth, I bet you those arguments were uh, being pushed with the people who were around in 2000, 2006, etc. And going back to the 70s and probably going back further beyond that. Subtleties. The only things that we've had are things like the introduction of refracted geometric horizons, which is an oxymoronic notion in the first instance. But, you know, Andrew Thomas Young and even the people that are in our arena now may actually have some small influence on the heliocentric rhetoric, believe it or not. So if anybody can cast their mind back to an Arwin, maybe six years ago, was talking about the idea and notion of being able to influence the heliocentric rhetoric, if you can put in... Uh, a certain aspect of the the story that's worthy then why wouldn't you have your name ascribed to it now number one he's absolutely he was absolutely correct but moreover it won't necessarily be someone like arwin that would end up with that privilege if you want to call it that it's more likely going to be someone like simon dan mc toon that kind of person that will end up overcoming a bit of rhetoric with uh whatever position that they've formulated and that just ends up slotting in to the heliocentric rhetoric like oh well, that's a really good overcome to this particularly sticky wicket so that will become part of the rhetoric may not be ascribed to them by name but like i say with refracted horizons you could directly ascribe that to certain individuals when you describe it as a physical observable horizon that is refracted into a non-physical non-geometric position by way of the mathematics employed by that gentleman so that is a direct influence on the rhetoric but aside from subtle details like that i would suggest that the rhetoric hasn't changed at all in probably a hundred years maybe a bit longer I'm, and i'm talking no subtle changes either like almost no change from establishment 300 odd years ago to now it's it's probably had very little actually alter it's just how the information has been peddled to the public that's altered anyway well, they're still just... using the uh they're still well, using no. the boats they're still using the boat situation aren't they apparently disappearing over the uh you know the physical horizon earth curve as proof of that they live on a glove i mean that's <laughs> they're still saying that now 
They're employing Render the physical... was waffling in the day. Yeah, they're employing the physical geometric spheroids that's laid down in their Earth curve maths, derived from flat Earth measurements, obvious, obviously. Oh, yeah. Obviously that, yeah. Yeah, but they say we have an edge. Don't they realize that they're the ones that have the edge? No, I mean, that's the sort of... Uh, semi-advanced I was going to say but it means you're into flat earth or the counter argument to flat earth when you're at the position where you've been presented with the idea that we have an edge that we should be defending you've got to be at least a little bit into the subject by that point would you not agree my point being at which point you're not in any other if you're putting to a flat earther that they should be defending an edge, you're well past the point of indoctrination. You're literally defending your religious belief at that point. So even if you did, as a flat earther, point out to them, I don't claim an edge. You've got that from flat earth society because it's the first Google result. It's not a claim I make. Meanwhile, you absolutely, without question, have a physical geometric sphere edge for a horizon that you call Earth curve. We debunked it in 2020, but you have an edge. Well, some of them have even changed that. You know, the, you know, nobody's ever claimed a, a, the horizon's physical. So, like you say, you get the refraction, uh, you know, uh, horizon moving positions, and then they're claiming that they've never claimed a physical horizon. Uh, so they just changed the, the goalposts all the way along it. Yeah. Well, I got a question. How do you get a horizon on a globe anyway? You don't see slope intercept formula or any video titled slope dope but what you're talking about one deck is the approach of an anti-flat earther when they will more than happily relinquish their own rhetoric in order to gain a point over a flat earther it doesn't matter if they fundamentally sacrifice their entire religious belief in a globe to make that detrimental to a globe claim to overcome a flat earther's point They'll relinquish the claim that they've got Earth curve, which is what you've just described. Nobody's claiming we've got a physical Earth curve edge for a horizon. So nobody's claiming Earth curve then. No, you're an anti-flat Earther and in this position where we've debunked it, you need to relinquish it and say nobody's ever claimed it. Yeah, they have. Al Baruni, for a start, if you want to look at actual aspects of your own bloody rhetoric. But you as an anti-flat Earther feel quite happy to relinquish your claim of Earth curve when it gets debunked. And suggest that it's a straw man that I would be saying that you should have Earth Curve in your maths that's labelled Earth Curve. No, we just debunked it. That's the bottom line. And they don't like it, so they tell us that nobody's claimed it when it's debunked. For any of you in the audience unfamiliar with the 2020 debunking of a physical geometric sphere edge horizon, we have an argument known as the Black Swan. If the Earth was a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles, then every distance to horizon measurement could be no more than 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height and feet. Distance to horizon in the black swan image, beyond the physical limitations of a sphere edge at 1.2 times the square root of the observer's height and feet, therefore the Earth is not a sphere, and the horizon is not Earth curve. So can I say I won the bet? Because if you remember, when that first came out, we took bets on how long it would take for it to sink in. And some of you put out some numbers, and I said they'll never get it. So I win. What do I win? You don't win anything. Then why the heck did we make the bet? I should get something. Uh, I want $500. Props, props. You get props. No, nope, I want 500. Okay. Well, no worries. You can want what you want. Is there any evidence of a physical geometric sphere edge formerly known as Earth Curve? We just went through this. Don't you have a video to cover? Yeah, we're chit chatting. Man, you were all keen in the pre-show to talk about Owen Benjamin and Eric DeBay. Yeah, that's called pre-show. Now it's the show. Now it's time to educate people. Well, thanks, Neil. It's good to have a reminder what I do for a living.
We do have a video to cover. Is there anybody, anybody else that wants to insert anything before I start introducing this video? Clearly not. Did you did you cover ahead. Candace uh, exposing NASA? One more time, did, Apocrathon. Uh, did you did, have you covered uh, Candace Owen uh, talking about the Satanism and NASA yes. and how they like? Oh, oh, I, oh, I didn't. Well, I didn't Satan, know Satanism and NASA. No, we, we covered a, a couple of days ago, and she'd essentially at the beginning of a maybe ten minute video talked about how she doesn't trust science. And then at the end of the video, she did a comment response from someone saying, don't give up on flat earth. It's really good. Blah, blah, blah. But to, to oh, yeah, she just did one, uh, I think the other day, uh, yesterday, or yeah, I think yesterday. And yeah, she then, just goes deep into the history of uh, NASA, like Alistair Crowley and Jack and like just the, the characters, the ones who created JPL and stuff. And how like they got, they used to get like and they lived in Pasadena and like cops would come to their houses and but they pretty much like were just given a pass and they're just this occultist but I don't know cool video I see so Candace Owens has gone on an anti NASA vibe yeah that's yeah. not us here well, I mean it is to a certain extent there is no sky vacuum. You can't have gas pressure without a container. If the sky was a vacuum for NASA to be putting spaceships in, then the gas would also be able to fill that availability of volume. As per the second law of thermodynamics, entropic dispersion. Gas fills space. High pressure goes to low pressure. If the sky was a vacuum, we wouldn't have any gas to breathe. It's that simple. So they haven't got an area they can put rockets into because gas would follow it, the rocket, into space. There is no space. It's nonsense. Everything that's based in space is lies. Hmm. You just reminded if he said that she's talking about NASA, you know what's going to happen next? What? She's going to find Jiren. Great. What's wrong with that? Oh, you think it's wise for her to find any one of the three stooges? Molari and Scurvy? I don't care. If people find their way to Jaren and then find out that NASA's been lying to them and they didn't know before, what's the problem with that? Because it doesn't stop there. It goes on Let's get her to her. ether and dielectric acceleration and the answer for gravity. And it causes people to say, this is stupid, I'm out of here. Okay? That's why. Only in the pre-show you were talking about how as a result, this isn't my inference for the audience. This is what was discussed, right? The inference that as a result of Owen Benjamin yesterday saying that he thinks flat earth is stupid and that if you are looking into the subject, I don't know, I've not watched this, but essentially a negative comment towards flat earth. Now, personally, I don't really care, but the people on the panel saw fit to discuss this, which is to say somebody of note, Owen Benjamin in this instance, has got a bit sick and tired of the subject. Now, without knowing anything or watching it, Neil immediately jumped to the conclusion that because he's hung around in bad company, like he's suggesting Jaron is in this example, that he's, oh, Benjamin has, gone on to a less than desirable path, and at the end of that path is him going, I'm sick of this. Right, Neil? That's correct. That sums it up correct without watching anything or talking to him or knowing anything about what he's actually trying to communicate. No, I said if he said, if that's his attitude. Like, I don't know if he said this is retarded to even talk about it anymore or if it's retarded in general. So I don't know. But being the company that he's been around in, I couldn't doubt it that he would say this is stupid. Okay. The only person who's actually seen it is uh, Bexy or however you say his name. So he's not around at the moment. So let's move over to the video. Okie dokie. So this is Just Thoughts YouTube channel, whose link will go in the live stream chat immediately. Please let him know. At Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me with a nice polite comment that won't set off the algorithm for censorship and get your comment removed. So let him know at Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me. You can see in the live stream chat now I've just posted a link to his channel. Or her. I don't actually know who this is. It might be a female, for all I know. Nevertheless, please let them know. 
I'll do this call to action two or three more times so that the people who are actually in the live stream watching live, or if you're watching after the fact, just go and pull up the chat, um, do actually do this and share the algorithmic love that we do not, we definitely do not receive from YouTube. So the only way you can sort of hope to influence the algorithm in this regard is do as you would hope others would do unto you, which is to say, we are supporting other YouTubers. This guy's a smaller YouTuber. Typically, we're covering larger ones, but in this case, he's obviously a smaller YouTube channel. Um, I'm sure he would definitely appreciate people coming to his video, leaving a few comments and boosting him in the algorithm. And like I say, the hope is that I'd get the same treatment from him or her if they were to review this video in response or anything in response to us and what we do in general. So yeah, share the love, give him a comment, let him know, at Nathan Oakley 1980 sent me. I won't ask if anybody's got any comment on the video because nobody's watched it. So we're doing this completely blind. Nobody knows other than Mush who has a little look while we were alive. Um, so let's just get into it. I'll check the levels as we go. Hey there, mystery fans. Today we're diving into a topic that's generating a lot of buzz, the shape of our planet. You might be surprised to hear that some folks believe the Earth is flat, like a pancake. Most Opening up with a straw man and stereotyping fallacy, most people immediately, that's, that's a stereotyping fallacy. And then straw man, most people, no, you haven't confirmed that stereotyping fallacy, believe it's a pancake on its sides, floating in a sky vacuum. How many of the most people did you survey? I ask myself. No, we don't need to ask that question. It's definitely a stereotype fallacy. It's definitely a straw man fallacy. I don't believe Earth's a pancake in a sky vacuum, First as depicted. That's I'm ridiculous. Getting through, immediately getting yammered through. What's going on? Still in the middle of the same sentence. Go on. Go ahead, Neil. I said that, that's ridiculous to even state. Like, we don't know that the oceans are deep. So we think it's a pancake, really. See, that's the problem. They still have us in a solar system. Yeah, this guy's done a cursory search on Google and found his way to Flat Earth Society, say Earth's a pancake in a sky vacuum. Therefore, most people say. No, just a stereotyping fallacy. Scientists, however, agree that the Earth is a sphere. Scientists agree? Well, then they're not scientists. They don't need agreement amongst men. If it's scientists, then they're performing experimentation by varying and manipulating that which they assume causes an effect they're studying. That's called an experiment. That's what science is. We use you are under the misapprehension, sir, that science is somehow a consensus of view that is agreed upon. No, somebody doesn't know what science is. Yeah, like a giant basketball. This difference of opinion has sparked a lot of debate and it's important to understand both sides of the argument. That you don't understand both sides of the argument. You've just used a straw man and stereotyping fallacy. But you're suggesting to your audience that they go and learn the argument you don't understand yourself. Wow. In this video, we'll explore the arguments for a flat Earth and then examine the overwhelming scientific evidence. Scientific evidence for a globe is a category error. Shapes aren't causes and effect relationships that you can study through the scientific method. A shape isn't a phenomena. This is stupid, you're in a category error. But you think there's overwhelming cause and effect relationships to validate a shape? My God, this is idiotic. Is that sort of poisoning the well, Nathan, by him saying about the flat earth proof and overwhelming, you know what I'm saying? Like exaggerating that there's more proof for the globe? Well, it depends. If he backs it up, then, then no. If it, if it isn't backed up at all, it's a baseless assertion. Well, I mean, we'll see if he's got overwhelming mountains of evidence for a globe. I don't know if that's poisoning the well. It's just making a baseless assertion at this stage. Earth, get ready for a wild ride as we unravel this intriguing mystery. This as well. Sorry. Okay, let's it's, talk um, about. If somebody's if somebody's coming in new to this and, and looking into it straight away, they've been put on the wrong path. You know, he's making it a joke. He's making it. He's taking the mickey out of flat earth and pancakes. He's using scientific um, wording when it's got nothing to do with science, the shape of the, the earth. So anybody who's just coming in for a little bit of a taster, who's got a little bit of interest, they'd probably just think, oh, I'm not listening to this anymore. And it just puts them off going any further. Well, that's Quite his, in the well. Well, yeah. yeah. But that's, his, that's his objective. If he can convince others it's stupid, then he can get on with his day. 
like all anti-flat earth or globe videos that are decrying flat earth, they're seeking their own pain relief. Right? He's come across this subject, it's troubled him, so he's gone out of his way to make a video about it. About the flat earth theory, folks who believe in... He doesn't know what theory is either. This idea, picture the earth as a disc with a dome-like sky overhead. Why? Because you say that's what most flat earthers say with the stereotype straw man fallacy. Why? So you can lay it up in a false dichotomy? Yeah, we've seen it all before. They often say that... And wait for a stereotyping fallacy? Things like gravity and space travel are hoaxes or conspiracies. Really? It wouldn't be the case that we ask you, the positive claimant, to back your assertion of gravity. It wouldn't be the case that we would challenge you to make your claim sound with evidence. No, no, no. We say things like space and gravity are hoaxes. No, no, no. What we say is space is a second law of thermodynamics violation. Yeah, that's not saying it's a hoax. It's citing a natural law and the consequences of having an area of, voluble, of, uh, of volume available to gas, which expands in all directions to fill volume. That's what we do. We don't just say it's a hoax. That's what happens when you do stereotyping fallacies and straw men. Somebody who's actually part of the group you've stereotyped will point out how wrong you are, making you look stupid. One of the main arguments for a flat Earth is that it simply looks flat to the naked eye. When we look around, we don't see a curve on the horizon. I think we've, uh, I think we've moved on a little bit from them, pal, because we can actually explain how it's measured flat, yeah? Using elevation angles, celestial navigation, yeah? We can demonstrate it, point it out, how it's physically measured flat. That's where we're at now. They also point to the fact that water always finds its level. Suggest it does. Suggesting that the Earth's surface must be flat for this. Well, it's quite a lot of water. To be true. Some flat earthers even conduct experiments like trying to measure. Here we go. Conduct experiments like trying to measure. It, when you use these words, do you not recognize how stupid it is to say experiments and then follow that up with something that is clearly maths like measuring things now you don't know what science is measure the earth's curvature over long distances let me get this right you think flat earthers go out and measure earth curvature over long distances yeah he's right isn't he we're surrounded by idiots in this community of flat earthers where they go out of their way to talk about how curvy it is or isn't and how much earth curve we should or shouldn't see yeah, yeah, I'll have to agree with you on this stupid nonsense. I don't understand this. Why flat earthers would be out there talking about the globe and what it should or shouldn't do. You'd think that would be the positive claimant's job. But no, it seems we've taken on that job and the perception by these numpties, this guy in particular, just thoughts, is that we go around talking about earth curve all the time. Now, at face value, if you're on the outside looking in and you think about the subject, you'd go, well, that seems preposterous. Why would they be going on and on and on about their opponent's claim? Yeah, it is. But that is exactly what happens, isn't it now? Yeah? If you're a flat earther listening and going, well, I spend my time telling people how Earth isn't a sphere. Oh, really? Why would you do that? What, just so you antagonise the person that believes it is? And then you get into an argument with them. If you're going to enter into this discussion, number one, know what you're talking about. Number two, tell them how it is. And if they argue with you, point out that they don't know what they're talking about because you weren't asking or inviting them to debate with you. You were telling them how Earth is measured. For them and you. Oh, what's that? You say you've actually got a sphere belief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your sphere belief's also based on those measurements. Were you unaware? It's not a question, by the way. I'm not inviting you to believe in this. I'm just telling you what the world is, how it's measured. For everyone. They believe these experiments support their view. Do they? I mean... I can't really disagree. I can only speak from my own point of view, but I know damn well that there are people out there in the community that literally label their videos with the word experiments that are describing Earth curve when they're flat earthers. I mean, it's a bonkers upside down world that we live in sometimes. But I've got very little to actually contrast when he puts this stereotyping fallacy to me, other than to say, I don't do that, which I do not. But you can totally appreciate where he's got this impression from when the majority of flat earthers can't shut up about Earth curve. Even though the scientific community often disputes their methods and interpretations.
Do they now? The scientific community get together, put their heads together as scientists, and then talk about other flat earthers and how their methods are flawed. <laughs> Is that what those scientists do? While they're having a smoke and maybe a whiskey? <laughs> No, no, that's not what scientists do. That's people talking to each other. Now, let's turn our attention to the scientific evidence supporting a spherical Earth. No, oh, let's do that immediately. I know we can't, because it's a category error. You can't cause and affect a globe. This is idiotic. What do you think he's going to say? I don't know. We'll find out. What do you, why, go on. What do you think he'll say? Well, I don't know. I'm just trying to think. What what would he think is science? He obviously doesn't know what science is, but what what's he going to use for the scientific um, proof of a globe? Um... I can see it on the subtitles. <laughs> he's going to use he's going to use boats over the horizon. He's going to use boats falling over an edge as scientific evidence. Yeah, but Nathan, you have to break down why it's category error. And what science is, because you do have new listeners coming in. Science is a methodology to prove things. It proves, as the title suggests, physics, things in the physical and natural world. That is to say, it gives an explanation for phenomena. So how does the process function? Step one, observe a phenomena. That is to say, see something in nature that is happening that's natural and you want to know why it happened that's step one step two is formulate a hypothesis presume a cause for the effect you are studying i think this will cause the phenomena i am studying now that is half of a hypothesis you've got your independent variable that would be to say what you think causes the effect you've got the thing you're studying phenomena otherwise known as dependent variable. And once you formulate that with a null, which in reality doesn't need in, in actuality formulation at all on paper, it's implied. The method requires it. But the antithesis of your prediction, if this, then that, that being the phenomena, this being my presumed cause, then your null is a zero difference result. You vary this, that doesn't happen. Now, that's step two, formulate hypothesis. Step three is actualization of the hypothesis, otherwise known as an experiment. Vary your presumed cause, see if it causes the effect. Now, if you have followed that process, then that is, ipso facto, the scientific method, aka physics. This, looking at a ball, <laughs> that's a shape. It's got sod all to do with cause and effect relationships. Sod all to do with science. This man is a moron. He's probably going to use the boat uh, disappearing, appearing to disappear as the um, observed natural phenomena. That's what he's going to use. Uh, and then the reason that that's happening is because obviously the Earth's a globe. But I don't know, I, I, even though that's incorrect because it's not really a natural phenomenon, I don't know how he's going to very manipulate that afterwards anyway, but I reckon he'll go down that route you think for one second this clown's going to formulate this into a scientific prediction, a.k.a. hypothesis? Absolutely not. He doesn't know what science is. He's already demonstrated that half a dozen times in the last three minutes, even though it's only been a minute and a half of video, but for us. He's incompetent when it comes to the subject he's covering. There's no other way to describe it. Now he's about to describe boats falling over a bleeding edge. See this diagram in the thumbnail on the timeline? That has got a flat earth pizza pie with an edge that he strawmanned us by stereotyping fallacy at the beginning of the video. It has an edge that they like to throw at us like we have to prove it when we're not claiming it. Meanwhile, we're about to go to boats falling over an edge because that is his standard. Now, I love pointing this out to Globers because they think it's preposterous when they ask us, where's your edge? <laughs> Uh, I don't actually claim an edge. You do, though. You think boats fall over it, don't you? Evidence comes from observing ships sailing towards the horizon. As a Sailing towards the horizon? You mean falling over a physical geometric sphere edge we debunked in 2020? Boats falling over an edge, mate. Yeah, you've got a stupid edge that you think boats fall over. 
Meanwhile, in reality, hashtag shit shrinks. The ship sails further away and gets smaller. It appears to sink below the horizon. Oh, sorry, sink below a horizon? The optical dissolution point that you use to claim Earth curve is a derivation of a flat plane measurement to infer that you've got a point below it for boats to fall over. No, my friend, the mathematical derivation of your claim was debunked in 2020. Furthermore, your claim itself requires we measure Earth flat for the surface level derivation for an Earth curve. You can't derive a difference from horizontal without first having a horizontal to derive it from. And in the Earth curve maths, they use surface level to derive it. That's a flat Earth surface to claim a deviation from it. You think boats fall over it in an orthographic mathematics known as Earth curve maths. It doesn't. It's absurd. Boats don't fall over an edge. Hull first until it disappears completely. This happens because the Earth's curvature obscures the ship from our view. If the oh, really obscures the Earth from our view in a mathematical derivation of a surface level calculation. I'm thinking no. I'm thinking that you first must measure Earth flat to make that inference. You'd need a surface level. That'd be sea level. You don't have one. You're inferring there's a point below the surface level that boats fall over. If the Earth were flat, we would see the entire ship shrink in size as it moved away. But we What, like things shrinking with perspective? I'm going to hear that again. I'm going to rewind it. This guy has literally put a false dichotomy together that says boats go into the distance and the only reason we lose sight of them is because an earth curve edge blocks our view. That's boats going over an edge. Meanwhile, if earth was flat, things would get smaller. Yeah, they do. It's just that particular description has been hijacked and called earth curve, meaning that in your maths... The feet and inches value for a boat you're assessing in the distance does not change. It stays the same value. It's always a 50-foot boat in the distance. doesn't matter if it's a million miles away. For you, million miles away without an earth curve in the way means we can see a boat that's 50 feet at a million miles in your maths because there is no perspective in earth curve maths. You've hijacked it and called it earth curve. Meanwhile, the mathematics itself requires surface level. That's level! But we wouldn't see it disappear below the horizon. Another piece of evidence is the way different constellations are visible from different parts of the Earth. For example, the Southern Cross constellation is visible from the Southern Hemisphere, but... Oh, really? It's interesting you should mention stars because we use them to make our maps flat and navigate flat and measure Earth flat. We also use those flat Earth measurements to build a sphere with them. So it seems stupid that you would be mentioning the stars given that we measure them with a flat Earth to create maps and navigation systems with them. Why would you be so absurd in bringing up something that absolutely without question requires Earth to be flat to measure them and map the world with them? but not from the Northern Hemisphere. Why are you begging the question of hemispheres? The only spheres that are involved that derive from perspective measurements of stars when the sky is flat and the ground is flat and parallel with it. So you can describe it through a protractor as a hemispherical view. That, my friend, has nothing to do with the ground. You, with your begging the question hemisphere, are under the misapprehension that the ground is spherical after you convert angle measurements from a flat plane into a latitude system wrapped around a ball. The latitude system itself is derived from angle measurements to Polaris in the Northern Hemisphere and an inferred Sigma Arctantis centralised point in the Southern Hemisphere. So you can plot these two separate flat Earth hemispherical view-based systems antipodal from one another in a system called the Celestial Sphere. Now, at this point, when we've mapped and measured the stars and given ourselves this inference of two antipodal flat planes with a celestial sphere wrapped around it, still has flat planes to measure the angles from. There's no inference whatsoever until conversion of the latitude system onto a ball that we have a spherical surface. There isn't one. Got to do a whole bunch of conversions from the flat measurements we actually take to get you to your ball for you to beg the question of hemispheres when you make this claim. This wouldn't be possible if the Earth were flat. 
We also have photographs. Sorry, that was a baseless assertion. Why would not what be possible? Seeing stars that we measure flat. How absurd. It's only possible if Earth is flat. You've mapped out the territory with them by measuring angles to them off a flat ground. Graphs of Earth taken from space by satellites and astronauts. Space? What, like a second law of thermodynamics violation sky vacuum with all of the high pressure gas in this image not filling the high vacuum? Now, I'm pretty sure that if you put high pressure gas next to a vacuum, it just expands at a higher rate of speed into whatever volume it's got. It's a law of nature. So there are no satellites in space. What an absurd notion. Astronauts are all liars if they're claiming to be in a sky vacuum, looking back at high pressure gas, not following natural law. How stupid. These images clearly show the images. I mean, these are just bullshit CGI representations that don't have gas at high pressure filling a vacuum. Utterly absurd. The thing is, he's gone, he's gone from like, um, you know, observing a boat apparently disappear into the horizon and just presuming that's because of Earth curve. Uh, he's not talked about any measurements or give it any other possibility why that could appear to be happening. And now he's jumped straight up into the sky talking about stars, space and the ISS. Pathetic. Yeah, it's going to his bloody sky gods that have lied to him. My priest said he floated around in a sky vacuum. Oh, did he now? And you believed him, did you, Dumbo? No, my friend, there is no sky vacuum for your priests to believe in being there. There is no there to be. The sky is not a vacuum. The Earth's spherical shape. While some flat earthers argue that these images are fake, the sheer... By fake or a second law of thermodynamics violation, number one, they absolutely without question are fake. These aren't photographs. This is a CGI rendering of a fridge moving around a spherical surface. I mean, how many fridges have you seen in space? None is the answer. How many blue space skies have you seen? None. How many times have you seen high pressure gas not going into vacuums, not following entropic law? So meanwhile, down here on the surface of your bullshit globe that you believe we're standing on, you think that we've got weather systems that follow entropic law, that would be high pressure moving to low pressure, to give us wind and such like. But that system that dictates how weather's formed with entropic laws in tow isn't being abided by with a high vacuum right next to it. You people are all idiots. The sky is not a vacuum. There are no fridges in the sky vacuum. Your volume of evidence from multiple sources makes this highly unlikely. Right, with those words flying through space, I see. Must have been a real photo. But flat earthers by stereotype say these images are fake. How dare they? Enter a Star Wars style Ashton on the screen. What the hell? Obviously fake. Meanwhile, the ones that you believe in, regardless of whether or not they are claimed to be photos or not, have come from an area that isn't real. A sky vacuum with our high pressure gas that we love breathing, not filling it. No, that's a straight up second law of thermodynamics violation. Definitely not real. The idea of a spherical Earth isn't new. In fact, ancient Greek scholars like Pythagoras and Aristotle figured this out over 2,000 years ago. How did they yeah. figure <laughs> it out, I wonder? <laughs> figure it out sounds like calculations to me. I wonder what they measured. Go on, one deck. Just, yeah, I'm just going to say what you've just said. Yeah, yeah, he will be now demonstrating um, uh, some presumptions and um, elevation angles from the surface of Earth using sticks and shit. They'll be measuring shadows, basically. Yeah. A few presumptions this. that we live on a sphere. Yeah. They notice things like the curved shadow. I think he's going to go to eclipses. They notice things like the curved shadow Earth. Did they now? So they knew it was a shadow because of the not yet in existence heliocentric model that would infer we have orbital motion and occultation for eclipses. That's what they gave as an inference for Earth being in an orbital motion. No, no, no. The very notion that it is in orbit came from flat Earth measurements to derive radial values to put the Earth in a position where it's spherical to then put it in a motion around the sun. So no... 
looking up and seeing what you think they said was a shadow in some absolutely unverifiable nonsense from Greece thousands of years ago isn't going to stack up if you haven't got any primary source evidence for it when it's only an inference and a presupposition that it is even a shadow. This doesn't fly. Casts on the moon during a lunar eclipse. Yeah, presuppositional orbital motion that hasn't been developed yet. Fast forward to the age of exploration when intrepid explorers like Ferdinand Magellan circumnavigated the globe. Did they? My, I was under the impression that they navigated using the stars with respect to elevation angles and their ground positions at 90 degrees to wherever they're navigating to or from. Because they're plotting out their position with respect to these stars so they can find their way home. Circumnavigation wouldn't be possible unless we had maps. Now, circumnavigation doesn't imply sphericity. What it does imply is that you've got to have good maps. And those good maps will be developed by these systems of angle measurements to stars. Specifically Polaris. If you're going to be circumnavigating, you're going to be moving in a circle around an area of equal elevation that can only be measured with respect to Polaris. Because that's what the grid on the map is using. Flat Earth measurements to that star. So circumnavigation requires a flat Earth, requires a flat map, requires you follow directions that are only navigable on a flat plane. So why would you go to navigation? Magellan's voyage, completed in 1522. Why are you showing us a flat map? With a chronometer. Two provided concrete proof that the Earth is round. These maps have got latitude lines on them. So if you're looking at maps with latitude lines on, you immediately know that the system it's based on is a flat Earth system. Because it's angle measurements to Polaris with 90 degrees below its position in the sky. That's how it's measured. On a flat Earth. This map wouldn't exist unless we'd measured Earth flat. Why would you put in this on screen? You can't have anything with latitude lines on it, unless you know Earth's measured flat. Today, we have even more sophisticated tools, like satellites and space telescopes. Space telescopes? What? Space being the sky vacuum where this high-pressure gas isn't filling? Here's a little slightly blurred part of the CGI. I mean, you could easily suggest that this is the thin layer of high-pressure gas. And this black area is claimed to be 10 to the minus 17 tor vacuum. Now, obviously, we're all well aware of what happens when you put a high-pressure gas anywhere near the vicinity of a vacuum. The gas fills the space instantaneously. But, I mean, in this scenario, no! Nah, second law of thermodynamics doesn't apply to the Earth. Of course the high-pressure gas, without containment, can be adjacent to a vacuum. No bother. Doesn't matter that violates a principle that dictates how the weather's going to be tomorrow. Entropic dispersion. Don't worry about that. The priests said they went up and sent satellites and telescopes there, so yeah. My God, people are gullible. That allow us to study our planet from afar. Do they? They allow you to look back at the high-pressure gas not expanding into the vacuum, do they? Really? These tools have given us an unprecedented understanding of Earth's shape, size and composition. No, they haven't. The shape... Size and composition is dictated by the navigational systems that are put onto the maps. Because they're critical in terms of actually being able to find your way around the surface. They're all flat. They're flat for a reason. If you're going to be drawing circles of equal elevations onto a piece of paper that's got the representation of land masses on it, it better be flat or it won't work. That's why all the maps are flat. Further confirming its spherical nature. Sorry, what was that baseless assertion? We've got stuff in space that you haven't presented. Therefore, we know it's a sphere. My priest said so from a place that isn't real. Therefore, we definitely know. Is this your mountains of scientific evidence, by the way? Oh, there he is. He's, he's the importance of the scientific inquiry. The scientific inquiry would be formulation of a hypothesis. The flat earth versus spherical earth debate highlights the importance of scientific inquiry. And no, it doesn't. It's a complete category error. Critical thinking. It critical thinking? No, scientific empiricism is formulation of cause and effect relationships, followed by the assertion of whether or not that relationship exists when you actualise a scientific prediction, otherwise known as hypothesis.
That's experimentation. That's science. This isn't. It's important to approach claims with a healthy dose of skepticism. No, it isn't. It's important to observe a natural phenomena, assume a cause, and vary it to see if it causes it or not, if you're doing science. Having a healthy degree of skepticism. For what? The experiment you haven't formulated yet. Why? And to look for... You said that? Health I okay. Why can you be skeptic when you read results or article? The whole point. Like you being skeptic now about stuff. Why cannot you be skeptic? He's saying that science requires a healthy dose of skepticism. That's not Anything so. required. It seems like I'm answering you and you're now replying in the middle of that answer. Try that again. This gentleman on this video is suggesting with the actual title about how important something to do with science is, is now just talking about how much of a degree of skepticism you use. Me, I'm pointing out that that is unequivocally not part of the scientific method. No amount of scepticism is required when you vary and manipulate that which you assume causes a phenomena you've observed. Do you understand? Yeah, I'm not sure you understand the scientific method, but Excuse me? you need to understand. Excuse me. Excuse me. I, I, nobody was quizzing thing. me on my understanding of science. This gentleman on this video, further to your critique that somehow we should be skeptical or have a healthy degree of it, is completely irrelevant when I'm critiquing this gentleman's idea about what science is when he says there should be a healthy degree of skepticism. That's not part of science. Now, you feel that the reply to that is to tell me I don't know what science is. Now, do you want to address what your criticism was about, which is me suggesting that he is utterly wrong when he says science has, has something to do with a healthy degree of scepticism? It doesn't. Can you acknowledge that rather than attacking me about my science acumen, please? I acknowledge that you are looking for things that which are not relevant to anything. Skepticism is a good thing in science and anything. It's got nothing to do with So you've guy. ignored me entirely. Oh. So rather than acknowledge what I've just said, you've ignored it and contradicted it. No, mate, skepticism's got absolutely zero to do with the establishment of a phenomena that you want to study, the presumed cause that you put into your hypothesis, and the actualization of that cause. That is science. Did I say skepticism in that? By the way, that's me detailing the scientific method you said I didn't understand. There's no skepticism in that. Do you want to acknowledge that? This is your last chance before you get removed, Hellfire. Okay. So can you acknowledge that your criticism was flawed because it's not whether or not I retain a healthy degree of skepticism, it's whether or not the videographer's assertion that it has something to do with science actually does or not it doesn't your criticism was stupid can you sit down shut up it seems like you don't understand what science is and are offering your interjections under false pretenses that you do you don't shut up science has nothing to do with skepticism you're as dumb as the videographer now sit down don't offer any other criticism when you don't know what science involves definitely not skepticism when you Shut up! Shut up! Do you not understand the words that came out of my mouth when I told you to detach yourself from this Monkeys discussion? Based on how ignorant you were and how wrong you were, something you've failed to acknowledge on three separate occasions, that doesn't mean continue to interject your opinions that are wrong about what science involves. You think it involves scepticism, like the videographer. You're as wrong as he is. You've also attacked me by saying, I don't know what science is. I absolutely do. You, on the other hand, think it involves scepticism like this stupid videographer. That's why you've been told to sit down and shut up. Evidence-based explanations. You can sit down and shut up! No, you can't explain. When you say scepticism has something to do with science, you, you, cannot you exclude behave. yourself from the conversation. You don't just yammer through the host telling you that you're going to be acknowledging that which you got wrong and you haven't done. That's where you exclude yourself. You don't then ask permission to carry on babbling about something else. 
I have demanded that you acknowledge that which I have undone in your criticism of me and my critique of this videographer and his assertion that scepticism is needed in science. It isn't. Which is And you cool. haven't... And now you're yammering through the top of me reasserting it for the fourth time. You haven't acknowledged that. Until you do, you don't get to join in. You certainly don't get to talk through me reiterating that which you have failed to acknowledge. Four times! You just don't get to take part anymore! Skepticism just kicks scientific method in the teeth. It's, you know, it doubts any truth or anything like that. It's nothing to do with scientific method, mate. Contrary to what this clown, who still thinks he's got a place in this discussion, it doesn't need scepticism. It's offering empiricism. Yeah, that's what it offers. Empirical outcomes, if followed correctly. You don't need to be sceptical of what the empirical bloody outcome that you get. It's just wrong. Like I say, I've told him that five times. He yes. hasn't acknowledged it, so he doesn't get to take part. If he keeps interrupting me telling him that, I'm just going to eventually server mute him. Science encourages us to question, to investigate, and to base our understanding of the world on empirical evidence. So it sounds like he's just completely contradicted his claim that it needed a healthy dose of scepticism when he's just specifically detailed the contrary. While it's okay to be curious and to explore different nope. ideas, we must be careful not to mistake personal opinions for scientific facts. The right, well, maybe you could explain to us what a scientific fact is. The beauty of science is that it's constantly evolving. Sorry, if it's a fact, how could it evolve? The facts are facts. Holy, oh, do you need it's a, it's a explanation or you want to just try all hell day? from this conversation because in the middle of me talking, after failing to acknowledge anything that was put to him, he's decided he's going to talk straight through the middle of me critiquing this video. No health eye, you've been removed from the discussion, get lost. New discoveries are made every day. And our... I know, science is empirical and once something has been established as the cause of a phenomena that you've studied, that's it. It will never, ever, ever change. Understanding of the universe around us continues to grow. Oh, really? I see. So it's not like you could have the empiricism that you inferred. Because it might grow into something new. No, no, no. Once you get an empirical outcome, that's it. You're done. You know it didn't cause it. Or you know it caused it. But you definitely know, and that's the end. Once you know something didn't cause something else to happen, it will never cause it to happen. If it did, it would violate the law of non-contradiction. So to conclude, it's one world, one shape. While the flat earth theory persists, the overwhelming scientific evidence points to a spherical earth. From ancient... Ob Sorry, baseless assertion much? Did you want to actually offer some of the scientific evidence in a category error? Oh, no, you won't be able to do that. Because there isn't any, it's a category error. Observations to modern space exploration, the evidence is clear. Our planet is a globe. Right, the evidence is clear, baseless assertion. What evidence? You didn't provide any. You've said consensus science says so. And then made the baseless assertion again at the end. This is the lowest standard there possibly is. Spinning through the vastness of space. Because you say so. Uh, the spinning description is also a derivation of a flat plane inference. Axial rotation requires a flat plane to describe it from. It's a plane of reference. Inertial plane, non-inertial plane. Understanding the shape of our planet is just the beginning. Mm, really? Well, we would say that it's the end. Once you've measured it, that's it. You understand it because you've measured it and then you know how it is. There's so much more to learn about our universe and our... Your universe, beyond what you see through a telescope lens, is a complete farce. You think that there's men floating around like gods in sky vacuums with high-pressure gas below them not expanding into the area that they're in. You have a belief in lying sods that have told you they are like gods. Place in it. So keep asking questions, keep exploring and never stop learning. Yeah, I would highly advise you do that. You, personally, because you don't know anything. You need to do a lot of that. Before you make any more videos, this one was garbage. Stri riddled with baseless assertions.
Anyway, that was it. It was only a short one. Well, that's fun. That wasn't a bad video, I wouldn't have said. Uh, oh, is he gone? Oh, he is still here. Mush. That was pretty good. Mush? There's a, there's a video that I posted in the chat in Discord, Nathan. Um, it's about, uh, it's on Twitter. Shane posted it. But it's really good. Like, they go into a lot of cool stuff about the moon. Um, <clears throat> being faked, obviously, the moon landing and like just NASA in general. It's three hours long, something like that. Maybe you do series on it. I don't know, but it's a really good video, though. Informative. Oh, uh, well, probably not today, but yeah, okay, maybe we'll look at that tomorrow. Even if it's three hours, mm -hmm. often we only cover a certain chunk. Go on, whoever that was from G. Anybody hear me? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Good morning, good morning. I'm having internet problems. I think uh, my satellites aren't working correctly today. No, it's a problem with the sky vacuum. Right, as is always the case, let this videographer know at Nathan Oakley1980 sent me. There's a link going by in the live stream chat now. Leave him a polite comment. Let him know we critiqued his video. Point out that we don't have a sky vacuum. Whatever you feel necessary. Did you hear what we were covering, though, uh, Chocolate? Only about like, a couple minutes of it. And the guy was talking about uh, boats going over the curve and stuff. If, if, if the curve wasn't curved, it wouldn't be doing that. It would just disappear into the distance. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that's what happened, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, anti-flat earthers will never change. They have such a low grasp of whatever it is they're trying to comprehend and then decry when it comes to the flat earth counterpart argument. It is quite a shame that the certain aspects of his video, you can you don't need to mitigate for them necessarily, but you can at least appreciate why he's ha under the impression that that is our position. Because we moan about it all day long with our counterparts that talk nonsense in this subject arena. And then when someone else comes along and goes, people in the subject arena talk this nonsense, how do you defend it? When you go, yeah, I know they do. It's not me. I don't do that. The thing is as well, it's like, it's so sad because, um, obviously, because we're in this arena and we know a bit more in depth, um, you know, on, on the subject uh, matter. It, just your normal sort of average joke listening to that would still be brainwashed with, well, yeah, the boat does disappear over curvature. Obviously, there's no other explanation for that. And there is pictures from NASA from space. He's just going over that and confirming that, uh, the eclipse, the moon, the shadow. So somebody who's just never not been into this subject, really, it, it, they will just take that as, well, yeah, that's that's correct. All what he's just said is correct. He's used the word science. He's, you know, he's talking. I mean, he was talking a bit like Dracula. It had Dracula music in the background, but I don't know if that helps him any. But um, yeah, so if someone's listening to that as, as an as an average Joe, they're, they're going to be uh, brainwashed. Yeah, quite possible. And, and then it comes with, oh, let's make one of the ladder. We're fine. Go for experiment, oh, right? So they go out to. To see your or, or whatever, and they try to show you something, and we'll just make fun of them for that instead of actually looking at whatever it is that they're trying to show you. Right? Just, just poison the well right there. Okay. And with such low standards, or well, flat earthers just see these pictures from space that's definitely real, and say they're not real, and that's the argument in its entirety. Moving on. And he didn't once talk it about any physical earth okay. curve measurement in that, you know, not that he's got any, but he didn't even attempt to to talk about how the actual circumference was actually physically measured. It was all like, well, the boat disappears, must be a curve, uh, moon shadow curve, um, circle navigate curve, you know, not, well, how do we measure it? How do we measure this drop over distance? <laughs> curve. <laughs> 
Hey, Brian. Hey, I was listening What's to some of the show. You know, hey, hey, one deck, hey, everyone. Um, you know what? Every time, every one of these, every one of these videos are the same. The Greeks, science is evolving. It's like you could literally get any ten or twenty of these videos together, and the same exact claims are being made in each one. And the Greek claim is completely false, um, provably, and. The claim of science is evolving shows that they don't have a clue about what they're talking about. It's like every one of these people have the same playbook and it's the same rubbish that has never been, that either can't be validated, or that is completely wrong, like the Greek claim, or they're completely wrong in, in their understanding of science. You know, I, I was listening there, and this is, this is what an audience member will take so much. Even if that, an audience, somebody just listened to this the show just was happening right now only one time. If they just took away this, when your man, when that guy said, scientific fact, you know, science is empirical. And then he says, science is God. The beauty of science is that it's always evolving. And you point out, Nathan, if it's a fact, it can't evolve into some other whatever it evolves, you know, into some other thing. Like, how stupid. Are these videographers sitting there and not thinking about what they're saying? Because it seems to me they don't have any thought. They just have a playbook that they read from one thing into the next, a narrate or whatever, one thing into the next. All this incorrect nonsense about Pythagoras and uh, the Greeks and all this other rubbish. They literally have absolutely nothing. But each one of them come out with the same thing. You know, earth curve, you know, both going over the horizon. There's absolutely no learning in these people. And it doesn't matter if the video came out five, six years ago or came out yesterday. It's the same rubbish. It's like they do no learning, no no um, research on anything. Nothing. Just, you know, earth curve, the Greeks, uh, mm -hmm. science is, evol is evolving. Them Greeks, so Brian. I mean, that's why I wrote that poem. Because when you do start looking at it, that, that is the answer. If you, if you start searching on Google as a newbie, uh, how do we prove Earth shape, uh, who measured the Earth? You don't get a direct answer. You just get the Greeks knew the Earth was spherical. They just knew it. Yeah, uh, but like, being again, Greek, another, being, uh, don't you have to be yeah, correct? An, an, Sorry. Yeah, an ordinary Joe, like probably me back in the day, you Google that and read, well, the Greeks, the Greeks knew the Earth was a, a, a globe. You just... So you, your brain just automatically accepts that in some cases, unless you've been into exactly. this and you're into it. Well, it's just well, an, an instant, it's, always... it's an instant fool. Sorry, mate. I'm just saying, you know the way they always, it's the Greeks, it's the Greeks, it's the Greeks. Why is it always the Greeks? It's never like the Romans or, you know, the uh, Persians. It's always the Greeks. Why is it always the Greeks? Because the Greeks... Uh, in history, had a very high-level society, supposedly, and uh, that was that was a more a more uh, let's just say structured society or something than the the societies around them at the time. So they're just trying to hijack the validity of the Greeks. The Greeks knew this. The Greeks knew that. The Greeks knew the other thing. It's like a lot of people are even naming out weren't even living in Greece. It, it's crazy. The stupidity go on with, and it, the Greeks can't have known that. <laughs> They couldn't have, not with the measurements that they were taking. They could only have been measuring a horizontal plane. There's no way to do anything else other than that. Hey, Brian. There was no globe before Kepler. Go on. <laughs> it's, just, it's slightly off topic, sorry. Um, Bible U from the chat says, Hey, Brian, is it a character association when someone mentions fight the flat earth's violent pre proclivities? Yes, it is. It is, yeah. Yes, but deserved. Anyway, I'm going to shout out Super Chat. Shout out to BG for hitting the Super Chat. He says, just because because he wants to give me money, or she. I don't know if you're a he or she, but thank you very much for the Super Chat. Really appreciate the support. Yeah, I used that as an example yesterday. So I'm like, when I do it, the same thing applies. If someone turned around and said, does this help your argument when you point out that Craig's a woman beater and a uh, convicted criminal? The judges say that he's, uh, what was the word that the judge used? Outrageously violent. Does it help your argument? No, it just means he's outrageously violent. Doesn't mean that we've overcome any of his positions from the globe standpoint. Doesn't mean we've made any points from the flat earth that are going to win or overcome anybody that doubted it. Doesn't mean anything. It's just a personal attack, isn't it? Well, that's literally personal with you, Nathan, because Craig 
was very personal with you, trying to character assassinate you in the past. So I understand why you do it with Craig, because of his behaviour with you in the past. Now, I don't deal with him. I don't say it at all. Uh, I don't go into that at all. Uh, but I understand why you do. Uh, and it doesn't even matter, even if this, the, the actual facts of the situation may not be, uh, may not be as, as said. The point is, is that it's a, it's a character assassination on Craig, the person who was willing to try and character assassinate you on something false years ago. Personally. You're wrong, so make it right. It to do that. It's no justification. Sinking to their level is what I've done, and Paul is more than happy to point that out, and she's right to do so. Because if lest I, I did add it yesterday when we were discussing this, lest I be a hypocrite, because I am. If I'm saying our arguments are not supported by attacking people's credibility, and then I attack someone's credibility based on them being violent and being convicted by a judge who described them as outrageously violent, me highlighting that doesn't prove Earth's flat, does it? Yeah, no, it proves he's a woman, Dita. Yeah, that's all it proves. Well, I don't know the full details of why I brought my Dom Craig. It's not my business. It's his life. Uh, but the bit I did hear about concerning this altercation he had with his neighbour, from what, it, from what I heard, I would have an altercation with somebody if that was the beha be their behaviour. So I can't... You know what I mean? I don't know what the person is. I know nothing about the person, but just that they, there would be at least an argument a raised voice argument, at least, with someone if they were carrying on the way that he said that his neighbour was carrying on. Yeah, I don't Can know, somebody sure. define what character assassination means, please? Because to me, it sounds like you're attacking somebody's character falsely. Well, Is this a way that you're attacking the character, not the argument? Exactly. It's like an ad hominem, but without them having to actually put an argument for you to ignore. A character assassination is just straight up attacking somebody based on their demeanour, their personality, their behaviour, as opposed to their position and argument. Huey said that we were wrong to say call it character assassination on Will Duffy. He said it was more of a review of that person's of that person's character. I could have taken that on board, but it's still the same. It's still doing the same thing. You're still pointing out flaws in the person's character to cause mistrust, to cause public mistrust in the person, which yeah. doesn't prove or disprove that there is a 24-hour Antarctic sun. But that's what people yeah, respond to. Yeah, but I to. that video. I didn't find the character assassination. I listened to it this morning. Don't people like to talk about other people? So when someone's got an argument to make or a policy to put forth or a position to stress, the general public, for the most part, is he a good guy? Who cares? Will the roundabout he's proposing in your town centre work? Yeah, but is he a good guy? I heard he had an affair. Will the roundabout work? Will it relieve traffic congestion? Yeah, but he did have a bit of a drinking problem. Who cares? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, you could character assassinate a lot of people because everyone's got some kind of flaws. And often the time, people who, are, who stand out a bit in, in society, they can also have big flaws. So often it's easy to a character assassinate somebody, but that doesn't mean that the roundabout they're building or the bridge they're building won't be a perfectly good bridge or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's safe to say that only your mother can character assassinate you then? Anybody can ass character assassinate anybody, right? You, if, it, if it wasn't the case that you couldn't do it, we wouldn't have politics hiring spin doctors to go out and run smear campaigns on their opponents and dig out legitimate things that they've done wrong. Now, if it was a reasonable world where we work with logic, they would attack their policies and f point out their failures in policy implementation if it was a political debate. But they don't. They say he's had an affair. Because <laughs> that's what people if respond to. to. If anyone wants to see character assassination in action, daily a character assassination, just go to my channel. Yeah, read a few you of Brian's find... comments. Yeah, it's just no end of character assassination. But it doesn't mean that after a while when there's nothing but character assassination. See, that was my issue with the whole Duffy thing. You can call out his character and review his character and tell him it as you like. If there's too much of that, it's going to be seen as an attempt to character assassinate him in case he shows a 24 hour Antarctic on, as opposed to just leave him go and show what he's supposed to be showing or not show it. You know what I mean? I don't care if he has if he's financially not trustworthy or if he has business dealings or he had an affair 
or whatever it's not to do, it's, it, it, like, it, it's nothing to do with me. Like if it's that just general normal stuff, it's nothing to do with me. You know, you know what I mean? Um, I'm only interested in his claims concerning it, concerning this nonsense he's, he's promoting in them. Um, I know he's a, he's dishonest. There's, like yeah, we can review him on those things, but that doesn't make any difference to the thing that hasn't happened yet. Will he show a 24-hour Antarctic sun? A genuine one? Or not? That's all that matters. And, and, and moreover, if he does show a 24-hour Antarctic sun, does that confirm the presupposition of antipodal positioning when you travel south? It doesn't confirm anything other than the sky is more mysterious than we thought. Well, it confirms that we have a 24-hour sun down there, if there is one. It will confirm that phenomena. Down where? There's no down. Yeah, yeah. I have to catch you out every time. I love it. Yeah, as we travel out south towards the horizon, out in the direction on the compass, used flat on flat maps, developed from flat measurements to flat skies and flat planes for angles to develop celestial systems, hemispherical in nature, to find our way so that we can safely and comfortably travel south. Flat. If when we arrive south, with the sky above and the ground below as we travelled, we assume that we are actually antipodal on a ball that was developed from those flat earth measurements, then I see a 24-hour sun... I can suggest that that is indicative of the presupposition of the antipodal positioning I used in my formal logical fallacy, known as affirming the consequent. If the Earth is a ball, I will observe 24-hour sun when travelling antipodal. I travel antipodal and see a 24-hour sun, therefore the Earth's a ball! It's just a fallacy. We aren't travelling antipodal, but that assumption must be made in order for this fallacy to work. Otherwise, they'd use the northern 24-hour sun that we definitely do have. But no one's assuming antipodal positioning when you observe that in the north. But we do when we travel south. We assume we're on the bottom of a ball. Therefore, anything we observe can suggest to be proving that we're on the bottom of the presupposed antipodal ball that we're obviously not on when we travel south. It's just stupid. People haven't recognised the fallacy. And even in the comments on the videos that I've put out about this, we're saying, yeah, it's just a fallacy. It's affirming the consequent. And they lay it out. You get comments that say things like, no, this would, would, would confirm we're on a ball. No, no, you've got a presupposition that you're on a ball. That's what's been explained in the video to you. No, no, it will confirm the model. <laughs> no, the model is your presupposition. <laughs> they just don't get it. They're too dumb. The thing is, is that what I'm more interested in is what will happen if they don't Let's say they do actually go in December, but they don't get to see a 24-hour sun. What about if they get to see exactly what was shown in Flat Earth Banjo's video, which doesn't, is doesn't do anything which either. Is a sun, a, which is redness on the horizon with complete darkness behind the person. So That's what? what was shown. So what you're saying is, if, the point, if they go down and we see the, what we expect and has been described by people like Robert Shortman, what would happen? Nothing. Yeah. Uh, this, see, this guy would vanish and would probably never hear from him again. A bit like the, the black guy that wanted to book an Antarctic uh, north-south circumnavigation trip. Do you remember him? What was his name? Big black guy. Oh, uh, the Great Asapien. Great Asapien. What happened to him? Just vanished for three years. And then when everyone forgot, he came back. That's what this guy would do. Oh, we didn't see it. Then he'll vanish and then come back. That's all that'll happen. In other words, nothing. But if they get to beg the question because they get to see a 24-hour sun that no one else is accounting for and there's lots of editing shenanigans going on when they claim they do show it, then we'll have an antipodal positioning assumption. No, we won't. We've overcome it before they've even left from the port. Good morning. Is that Adam? Go ahead. Good morning. No, it's oh, Hey, 10th. Good morning. Can you go to Master B? I sent you... Uh few slides concerning this video review that you're doing today. From Zetetic Cosmology? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I got it. Can you put it in? Yeah. Yeah, all right. So um, I'm going to go to my... Uh, so, so the cover there, and you look at the bottom, it says 1899. 
That's uh, just last week, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, eighteen ninety nine. Okay. That's if a bit you, expensive, uh, isn't it? It's a date. If you if you look at just the beginning of this pamphlet, it's not even a book book, it's a pamphlet, but it's his second edition. I have a lot to say here concerning what people are saying about, oh, flat earth is a new thing and it just started and the Greeks have always believed and we've known for 2,500, you know, all this crap. So here's 1899. And if you go to that where it says uh, assumptions, are you on the assumptions? Which one's the assumptions? It says synthetic cosmology, conclusive evidence, rotating, revolving globe, yeah. assumptions. On the it doesn't say assumptions on mine. Well, Let's go to the next page. It's just a list of hyperlinks with page numbers. No, you're on the table of contents. First, okay. First page. Assumptions. Oh, right. It's the one I was on originally. Yes, okay. Got it. All right. Interestingly enough, two things that are being contested today were addressed back then. Let's go. In order to account for natural phenomena in keeping with the assertions of the learned many hypotheses have to be laid down and many unfounded assumptions are absolutely necessary to support the unsound fabric of astronomical imagination. In modern science and modern thought, by S. Lang, the following occurs on page 51. What is the material universe composed of? Ether, matter, and energy. Ether is not actually known to us by any test of which the senses can take cognizance, but it is a sort of mathematical substance which we are compelled to assume in order to account for phenomena of light and heat. Whatever explanation may be furnished regarding light and heat on this basis must be discarded as utterly untrustworthy because the premises are assumed. Once upon a time, it was stated that the stars were motionless, but as soon as assumption was allowed to talk, the scene was changed, for as science shiftings informs us, volume 6, page 39, as soon as it was conjectured that the stars were subject to the law of gravitation, it was inferred that they were not motionless. <laughs> there was Nathan Oakley and Panel way back then. And there always has been. We're just carrying the torch. Okay. Everyone with me? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go to the next one. Do you see where it says Professor Huxley? At the top? Yeah. Okay. Page three and four. Professor Huxley had to resort to assumption to account for the disappearance of ships at sea. Oh, sounds like today's video. Although, had he known the truth of the matter or taken the trouble to inquire, his unwarranted assumptions would have been totally unnecessary. He says, we assume the convexity of the water because we know of no other way to explain the appearance and disappearance of ships at sea. What learning, what profound wisdom, if we know of no other way. It is better to admit the fact and wait until we have found out some other way to explain the difficulty. If there is any, knowledge is gained by practical investigation and experience and has no need of assistance, of assumption, to provide an excuse for ignorance. If water could be proved to be convex, there would be no need to assume it to be so. We should have many proofs and abundant evidence of the fact. But the fact that water has been proved to be level hundreds of times makes it necessary for those who refuse to believe proved facts, which tell against their theory, to resort to assumption to maintain their unreasoning position. And yet the same professor in his book, Science and Culture, says, the assertion which outstrips evidence is not only a blunder, but a crime. 
The assertion, therefore, that water is convex against proof furnished many times over that it is level is not only blunder, but a crime. He just stuck it right back to him. Interesting that we're just carrying the torch, huh, Nathan? Yeah. Like, like I said at the beginning of the show, it's a good chance that some of the arguments that we brace against as though they've been put to us in 2015, therefore our 2015 arguments have been ongoing for quite literally hundreds of years unchanged. And the only thing that we've seen in recent times is subtle changes. And the subtle changes to send their original claim into absurdity in the case of refracted horizons. Yeah, now if you go to that page that shows the hyperlinks, this is basically what's in this pamphlet. Assumptions, age of the earth, aeronautics, uh, contrast, contradictions, circumnavigation, curvature, canals, disappearance of ships, distances, fluids, figure of the earth, growth of the earth, gravitation, geology, horizon, the level on the uh, term lighthouses, midnight sun. Oh, yeah, he goes into that one. Motions of the earth, moon, the moon, eclipses, magnetism, navigation, pendulum, uh, polarity of worlds, planets, the parallel lines on railways, rivers, ridicule, the sun, sun distance, sun diameter. I could go on and on, but they're the same topics. Any more to add? Like a good read? Which is well, well, just to go over it. Sorry. Uh, the, the only thing I could add is uh, what Brian said and what the last part was. You know, the Greeks, as well as every culture, believed the earth was flat. Uh, so when, when someone wants to cite the Greeks, go further back than the couple of guys who got together who said, I wonder if we're a planet uh, round like, you know, we see what we think the stars are and, you know, we might be one of them. Until that uh, thought came into a few Greeks and they started muddling with their mathematics in a model, okay, now reality, all the Greeks believed the earth was flat. Every civilization believed the earth was flat. There was a changeover to this globe. And yes, the Greeks were involved with the thought and then the Romans and then et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But as I've uh, shared with you before and the panel, it, it's funny how it's, it was only in the West, this thought, but it started going East and, and so it finally reached China by the Jesuits, Matteo Ricci. And uh, he, he got there and he was frustrated because the Chinese were thinking the earth was square and flat. And he says, no, I just sailed here. It's, it's, listen, let me show you this new cosmogony. And he started showing what we currently have today. And the Chinese wouldn't have any of it. They kicked them out. And then he got back in, and I'm summarizing the whole story. I've got like eight books on the subject. And it wasn't until the late 1800s, and in some provinces of China, 1900s, about the time of this book being written, 1899, that people in China still believed the earth was flat. Well, what, what gave him that evidence, you might ask? Well, let's try one of their famous admirals, Admiral Zheng He, and his seven voyages uh, all the way to Africa and back, and how, how they used to navigate with starboards, uh, similar to the Kamal, similar to all the other uh, angle measuring devices that other peoples in the world use when they navigate. And they cited Polaris. And it was vast oceans he was crossing using the stars and the Polynesians. And so with 300 plus ships, 28,000 men on seven different voyages. And that was just one of the voyages with that many ships. They were very successful. So then we have a paradox here. We have the Chinese traveling the earth using flat, earth as their base on what they're traveling on and using the stars and the angles and it's working and then we have Matteo Ricci Jesuit coming in here and saying no 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 it's curved and we're on the ball and da 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 
And you say, no, you can't have both. If it's round, the Chinese would have failed. If it's flat, the Chinese were successful. So that proved them to be right. So Matteo Ricci had to what? What's our term these days? They need a what? Flat plane. They need a flat earth more than we do. Yeah. See, if, if Matteo Ricci's navigating exactly the same way as Admiral Zheng he did, then he was successful in reaching China. But if you're going to adopt a mathematical model and say it's happening this way, but in all actuality, you're using elevation angles and traveling on a flat earth, then it's no longer a paradox. Exactly. Okay, that's it today. I got to go. But that'll be my opportunity to round out and say, first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's live show possible. Stay tuned if you are watching an after show. Uh, however, if you are watching this live, this is where we bid you farewell. Big and far away, and we receive all we receive parallel light. Then that explains the shadows we see in reality on a globe of radius three nine five nine miles. Right? They need the see. They need the they need the sunlight to be parallel, and they also need parallel light rays. Remember, for all of our celestial navigation claims, the only way they can they can mathematically make celestial navigation work on our globe is with parallel light rays. That's how they try and, that's the excuse they come up with for why, which is incorrect, uh, by the way, why when you raise an altitude, the angle to the celestial body does, bodies don't change. So, if we're on a geocentric globe, then what size of distance is the sun? And how does that work? Because they require parallel light rays, which means that their sun has to be the same size and distance as it is heliocentrically. Heliocentrically. But that would mean that the sun, this sun, at that distance, has to be making an orbit of the Earth. But what about all the other orbits that yes, seem to happen around this central sun? Now, we're in our heliocentric parallel. How, how stuff work on flat Earth? No, I... Sorry, I don't know what you're asking me there. How stuff work on flat earth? That's that's a ridiculous question. You're making a positive claim all, all the time. How stuff I'm, I'm, I'm work pointing out. On I'm not making. I'm pointing out. Earth. I'm pointing out. Can you I'm explain? Out, I am pointing out. Of course, I won't get a chance to say it. I'm pointing out the problems with the official claims, not my claim. Official claims. Oh, I'm saying stop pointing. Things you don't understand. Start providing oh, yeah, evidence. Okay then. Okay then. For your okay, model. Give us. Okay then. Okay. 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 You're saying I don't understand, which is an ad hoc. Okay. Please present to us the geocentric globe paradigm. How does the sun work and everything else within that okay, paradigm? Okay. Okay. Did you listen and understand what no, I I'm just? No, I'm not interested in my holiday. You've been. Uh, you've been tasked. You've been ha are you've you been Nathan or are you is I've asked uh, you to produce something. You came in saying I don't uh, understand. I've asked you to produce something, and now you want to ask me more questions. How are you going to produce this? I'm not going to ask you a question. Uh, relax, you relax. Produce what I asked okay. for or not? It's a very simple question. It's a I, yes I, or no. It's a close question. I, I just. I How asked you, you a simple question. This? Are you okay? going to produce something? Are you Nathan or are you Nathan? Or are you Nathan. someone are you talking to produce uh, what I asked for? Who, who are you? Does it matter? Are you going to produce what I asked for? It matters because I'm going to ask you well, about uh, you your perspective of the world. For? Are you going to produce what I asked for? Since you, you don't, understand don't understand the scientific method, you don't even know who I, you don't even know who I am, and you're saying you I don't listen understand. to you. No, I asked you to produce something. You said I don't understand. You Nathan said I don't understand. So I asked you to yes. produce the thing that will disprove what I say. Are you going to produce the thing that will disprove what I say? If you produce it, it will disprove you. I just super mooted him for. Uh making uh, ad-homs. 
Yeah, he's not. He, he's coming in making ad homs, and then when he's tasked with with providing evidence for his ad homs, basically say he said, "I don't understand." Well, I tasked him with, with doing something that will disprove. Well, it won't really. It'll actually disprove him. But he's asked to come up with the geocentric glow paradigm, which would be pre Kepler. Sorry, pre Kepler. And all he's doing is waffling on. He's not producing anything. He's not even saying he will or won't do it. He wants to tell you and I that we don't understand what science is, Brian. He just wants to trigger us. The guy was clearly stupid. That was exposed immediately. I heard uh, I heard him coming in earlier with you. I was in the shower. I heard him coming in. He didn't know what he was talking about. But he came in saying, I don't know what I'm talking about. He said, you don't understand, right, is what he said to me. When I, I, he said he had listened to what I said. And I asked him to produce something. And he wouldn't give me a yes or no where he's going to produce it. He just kept on waffling off. Yeah, because he thought you were Nathan. Yeah, but he said, you don't understand. How does he know I don't understand when you don't even know who I am? He's one of the, I think, the most important American For me, colleagues. this is everything. Almost everything. Almost everything. Everything good. Yeah, he's one of the you're absolutely, Rose. It's sake. Him sake. can you pop yourself on mute? Him sake. Him sake. Thank you. That's all we've got. Anyway, back to the topic. Yeah, people in pain right. that want to tell us we're stupid and don't understand science. That's really all he wants to achieve. And any answers that came his way... You get a repetition of the question you're overcoming. Yeah, but I missed that whole thing. What did he come in saying to you? Because I couldn't hear. Wasn't saying anything. He was an idiot. Yeah, he wants to... This is another one of these people. Whatever it is about the borders, they're all the same. Uh, they all, or they all, uh, Not all of them. But it's such a huge amount of them of the same trait. They want to start talking and telling you about what you don't know and don't understand, and then they don't have any other facts for it. They don't know what they do. They don't know what they're talking about, and even when they're shown to not know what they're talking about, they want to still talk and be involved in a conversation and still try to be the teacher when they've been shown to be the student. It's ridiculous. I mean, the level of arrogance and entitlement with these people. In general, not every one of them, but with a huge degree of, we'll let I'll tell them as the ball cards, let's just say, right? Because I, some some of them, a small percentage of them, I can call it ball. But this kind of character is just a ball power. He has arrogance and self self entitlement. He wants to put himself in a position of being the teacher when he doesn't know what he's talking about. He told me I was wrong. Every single thing I said is 100% correct concerning his paradigm. I told Fish, I mean, I can literally show him. Uh, yes, he can say, he comes, talk, comes along and says, you don't know what you're talking about, or you wouldn't understand, or you don't understand. And then he, he, he doesn't even know who I am. He didn't know what I was talking about. How, how are these people surviving in the world? How are they crossing the road? How is that happening? How, how are, is there tunnels to use to go underneath? <laughs> how are you across the road? <laughs> yeah, I mean, how is that going to get across the road? Good pain relief. He thinks if he can come on to a live show and tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about, that that's a win. That's the, that's all he wants. You, that's a win for him. You don't know what science is. Tell me how flat earth works. Well, that's a very broad, generalized question. Can you blah, 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 straight through the top of you, Brian? <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the guy yeah. yesterday. I think he said, I was, I was in the middle of, I was just finishing up what I was saying, and he said, how oh, does this uh, the work on flat earth? Something like that. You know what I mean? There's nothing question that you know, you would never even get to actually inform them of how it would actually work even if they had all the answers. Because they wouldn't listen. If I could absolutely answer everything to do with the sky and the earth, give all the answers to all of it, I wouldn't be able to relay that information to someone like him 
Because as soon as I started start talking, he started telling me, you don't know what you're talking about, he'll be over-talking me, and I'd never get anyone. Ed, repeat the question. Yeah. yeah. Straight through the top of you. Yeah, and he'll do it again and again and again and again. I've, I've experienced it over the years, so, and I'm sure, you, obviously, you have, obviously. So many times, we all have. You, they look for, how, do you dis, how does this work, right? And you show them how it works and how it requires a flat earth. Then they go, how does this work on your flat earth? It's like you've just been given the information. Yeah, with them asking the same question to the top of the answer that they didn't listen to. And obviously not hearing it because they've talked through it means you didn't give it them. So they're perfectly within their rights to ask it again. They're just idiots. <laughs> As I said, how is that guy getting across the road? How Does he not cross the road? Is there someone who holds his hand or something and presses the button? You know, at the crossing. You know, and helps, you know, make sure he doesn't walk out in traffic. <laughs> How does he get there? Does he have a special dog? You know, a stupidity dog. You know, like, you, know, like you have blind dogs. You know, for dogs for blind people. Not blind dogs, but dogs for blind people. This, does this, he have a dog? There's no a global dog. <laughs> yeah, a road crosser. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. You could you can try and be as calm as you like with them as well. I'd say, you know, let's let's just have a reasonable conversation. It's not what they're interested in. They don't want a reasonable conversation. They want to tell you that you're stupid. That's their motivation. Uh, they don't want any conversation. Sorry, yeah, but... Just saying, that again, dog's what? a global retreat. <laughs> a globe station instead of an ad station. <laughs> a global <laughs> retriever. <laughs> a global retriever. Is that a golden retriever? <laughs> How guys like him to cross the road? Help them to I find the people... cornflakes in the morning. Sorry. So I was going to say, uh, I think people care more about the sky vacuum than the shape, though, from, from my experience. I think most people could handle it if it was flat, but there was still outer space and lots of planets and aliens. I absolutely agree. Absolutely, absolutely agree. I said the same thing years ago. And I'm not just saying it. I said the same thing years ago. And I'm not the only person to say it, right? So it's not like I'm taking credit for it. If they could still hold on to space, they'd let go of the sphere. It's the fact that you're taking away space is the biggest problem they have. Like they tolerate not having a sphere. They'd be okay on a flat plane as long as that flat plane was hurtling through space. They're heliocentric out of space. You know, you know what I mean? They'd be okay with that. <laughs> we'll you know. We'll settle for the pancake. <laughs> settle for the pancake. It's a space pancake. Yeah, that's what they would settle for, a space pancake. They'd still need dogs, though, to go across the road. That was kind of guys. For a long time, I didn't use the term ball coward. I've noticed that I've used it more and more in the past five months, even less than five months, for six months. Because I would consider Ruhif a baller. He's not a ball coward, right? But that guy is a ball coward. Right? Because there's uh, no Rufy. other way to describe him. Rufy's a ball coward. Not about it. I don't think so. I, I can call him a ball. I, I actually can have a conversation with Rufy. It would be impossible to have a conversation with that guy. So I kind of go, if I can't have a conversation with someone, it means that they're a ball coward. Uh, that's not my definition. I understand. <laughs> right. so, but we have different, we have different um, betting processes. Let's just say. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Go to my numpty clips, and you'll see. But you do agree. We can both agree that that guy is definitely a board house. The guy was in a minute ago. Uh, I wasn't here. Or oh, I, well, I, was. I, I can, I can absolutely agree for you. I wasn't. I wasn't here. If I was here, then I wasn't here. Still here. I was reeling. Sorry, Nathan. Cole. I was just saying, he's still here. He's still in the Discord server. We can hear you. Yeah. Well, I was reeling like just some glow, just uh, glow, heliocentric, you know, lore. That's what I was reeling. And I was pointing out something to do with claims prior to, prior to Kepler. And he came in and says, how does that work on the flat earth? <laughs> see what I mean? How does that work on the flat earth? Take the more from you and let's see what he's got to say. 
Yeah, let's have a laugh. Yeah. You want me, you want me to one of the server moderators? Because it wasn't me who put him on mute. Uh, yeah, he, he, he just he just add homes. That's that's why. Well, that's it. I don't want to you know undermine the server mod. He's gone. Sod this. The guy's not listening. He's chanting through him, and now he's just calling them idiots and stuff through the top of their objection to his question, which he's not listening to. So someone's put him on mute. So I mean, I'm not saying don't talk to him. I'm saying appeal to the mod in the server that put him on mute to take him off if you want to talk to him. Oh, I, I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> come, come, on. <laughs> come on, mate. <laughs> yeah, the guy's already been proven a dick, so why would you want to talk to him? Other than for the amusement of the audience. Well, at that stage, that's all we'd be doing. You know what I mean? So it wouldn't be correct to do that. In chat, there was a few people saying, producer Baller, I'm hungry. Producer Baller for Nathan, I'm hungry. So people like it. No one's taking him off mute. <laughs> well, you'll have to talk to him if he does come off mute because he's going to want to address you. You're the person he wants to talk to. Take a vote on it. Who wants this guy off mute? Yeah. One person out of about 30. <laughs> I don't want to be responsible. Not an overwhelming response, I would say. <laughs> one is it's one more than nothing. <laughs> that one deck global retriever, that was good. I didn't get it straight away. <laughs> I, I missed something. Go on, what was that? I was saying like I was asking, how does that guy get across the road? Like the guy was up, the baller was there a while back, and I was saying he must need a dog. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a blind person needs a dog. There's, like he needs a dog because he's an idiot. He can't get across roads. The dog has to bring him across the road, or someone has to hold his hand. And if a one deck said a global retriever instead of a golden. <laughs> ah right. <laughs> because they got their globe glasses on. It's like in They Live. Instead of trying to get the glasses on, we got to get their glasses off. What? That's like a movie sense? reference, yeah. Metaphor is that you can see the real world through the glasses. No, no, no. Brian, explain it to him, Brian. Because I'm yeah, driving in They Live, myself. that's a metaphor. In, the, in the, They Live, that's a metaphor, but... Uh, in reality, we got to take off those globe glasses. You know, they're seeing our core. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because these glasses are in there, you know, they have these glasses fogging their vision. Fair enough. It, it, it kind of works as a metaphor, but in reality, you put the glasses on and everything still looks exactly as it is because it always was flat. Nothing changes. Yeah, but in our little scenario, they they have glasses on that they must take off first before they get see straight. Yeah, they're seen curved with their glasses on. <laughs> they're orthographic binocular glasses. Right, because they're not looking at reality ever if they're seeing reality as a goal. So this is what's got to come out. The scale's got to come off their eyes. Orthographic no glasses, glasses. Oh, yeah. that's an old reference. That's a that's put a smile on my face. Well, being a union rep, it's time to get to work. So let's wrap this up. What? 
Um, I asked, I put out a video a week or so ago, yeah, asking uh, someone on our opposing side to come up with, an, with a distance to the horizon right, without inference of global geometry. Because it's unmeasured in reality. It doesn't exist. It's purely mathematic. So in reality, give me a reality distance to the horizon. And I tasked Proto, as he's a sailor, claim sailor and teacher of celestial navigation, and he's, he was claiming a distance to the horizon. Now, we don't know if he made a video. I didn't see if he made a video. He may have. He said he was going to make a video measuring the distance to the horizon. Now, I told him, if you infer the globe at all, like, that's it. It's gone. Like, you lose. You can't infer the globe. You can't infer a geometry that has no, no measurement in reality. You must gain a distance to the horizon in reality. Now, I know that's impossible. The reality, because the horizon is not a geometric point. You know what I mean? It's an apparent position, not a geometric point that will adhere to an, to a, to an elevation of an oil height. So anyone that comes back with, twice the, with, with a measurement to the horizon is obviously you know, either trying to pull your leg or is living in absolute fantasy land. It's like, it's like trying to weigh a rainbow. How do you do that? You, know I mean? you can't. It's impossible. So you're so telling me he's going to give us an address to a place that's moving all the time? To a place that doesn't exist, Neil. You know, it's like, can you go to the rainbow? No. The horizon is the same. You can never go to the horizon because it's not a position. It's not a geometric point. You can't determine where it's going to be via eye height. You know I mean, you can't do all those things. It's impossible. That was my point. I said, I told him, I said, Proto, don't... Yeah, it's I said, not tangible, don't. right? Yeah, it's, 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 it's... The only... We would have to be on a sphere and the horizon would be a geometric edge, not, not a horizon then. It would have to be a geometric edge of a globe. That's the only way, or unless we were on... Unless, the only other way was if we were living on a cylinder. Then it would be horizontal, but it would be a curve. You'd be, you'd be going in a curve over it, right? But only a cylinder or a globe is the only way you can have. You will be able to know the distance to the horizon, to what you're calling an horizon or a globe's edge, uh, via your eye height above sea level. Like, in reality, the horizon is a, an apparent position. It doesn't adhere to any... It does not adhere to geometry. How can it adhere to geometry when it moves about of its own accord? So how, I don't know. How, how are we fooled so long ago? How do we not know this? Well, I'm sure they did. It's just we people have been taught in school. And just like with that video earlier, the guy was saying you can both sail over the horizon. People don't realize that the horizon, you know, people like Mick West do, they know the horizon is not a geometric location. And he always did. Always did. He always knew, because he always knew the globe maps. And the globe maps, the actual the actual globe map placed the horizon as, or uh, uh, hit the horizon as being a cons consistently refracted position that changes from minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, week to week, blah de blah. Right? It is not a geometric point of tangency for a globe or anything else. So how are you going to measure the distance to the horizon? It is the absolute killer. It is the absolute killer for them. Because you cannot get well, it it's never been to that point. Yeah, it's, black swan. It's never, been de it's never been defined as a physical, has it, ever? Except for in the, the make-believe globe model, where whatever that is. No, 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 it's physical. You see it, it's not yeah, tangible. It's right well, within the globe paradigm, they actually don't even claim it. This is the thing. They give the impression that it's a geometric point of tangency that boats can sail over and blocks buildings, whereas in reality, their actual maps state that it's consistently out of whack mathematically with their with where it would be uh, via, via someone's eye height if we lived on a globe. It's consistently, not really, but that's the only way they can describe it, refracted from minute, differently from minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year. 
There's no consistency to its position whatsoever. And that's within their mass. That's where the 7 over 6 and greater than 7 over 6 terrestrial non-refraction comes from. That's what it's about. It's all based off of your straight line of sight to a position that does not adhere to geometry. No more. Does a rainbow adhere yeah, to geometry? Brian, no. Yeah, but Brian, well, Brian, the, it's the invisible horizon we're interested in. <laughs> well, uh, you're going to have to first prove an horizon on a globe, number one. Number two, you're going to have to then... I don't know how we want, uh, even my question, I, I was going to say, you're then going to have to show me this invisible horizon. But how can you show me something if it's invisible? <laughs> you can show me the map for <laughs> Well, What about a hill that's supposed to be getting in the way of stuff? How many times have you had to apologise for a hill not doing what it's supposed to do? Me, never. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> but there is other I people... I like the there. refractive blockage. You know, so. Yeah, refractive blockage. Yeah, that checks out. The hill should be blocking the thing behind the hill, but in fact, the thing that's supposed to be blocked is in front of the hill. It's just refract refractive blockage, obviously. Hills do it all the time. Yeah, and refractive blockage is not blockage. <laughs> that's the thing, isn't it? Or oh, it's refractive blockage, as in it's not blocked. If you look at, like, we are seeing the thing, the oil rigs, right? We're looking at the oil rigs. The horizon is behind them, right? It, it's refractive blockage. But what, it's not blocked. <laughs> We're seeing them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's not about seeing too far. It's about seeing things and then them trying kind to of tell us they're refractively blocked. And that's why we can see them. See them. <laughs> yeah, they're not, they're not there, but you can just see them. <laughs> yeah, it's not really there. It's a mirage, a slightly looming non standard refraction high in a holographic projection of the oil rigs from behind the physical geometric sphere edge horizon that isn't blocking them. Obviously. <laughs> I'm not there, but you can see them. <laughs> just the way you say that one day, put your accent, and I know where you come from, and you just live in stark reality. It's just like the way you said it, the sarcasm in that comment was, was a million percent. Refractive blockage, the thing that doesn't block out. <laughs> it's like refractive curvature. I'm not talking about John, where he took the name from. Refractive curvature. It's not curvature. <laughs> Yo, refractive curvature is not a cur curvature. Refractive blockage is not, not blockage. No, it's refracted. Right? So, you know, that's why it's blocked by not being blocked. Yeah. I need someone to do that like as a sketch. Like the two guys standing looking at the, the clock tower over the bay with the flat earther going, Nice <laughs> clock. And the glib are going, How dare you suggest we can see that clock? It's not really there. It's a looming refraction high in a holographic projection. It's behind the earth curve that isn't blocking it. Therefore, we've got earth curve. It's the best earth curve proof there is. Oh, are you nuts? <laughs> and the flat earther just goes, I, I just see a clock. <laughs> it's just a clock. What are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, what are you, nuts? <laughs> yeah. You see someone nuts, like... Just... Uh, just say, you see someone like John Cleese doing that, that that number, that'd be good. Yeah, you know what's funny? That I heard that that the members of Ponty, Monty Poison were flat earthers from a long time back. And that they had, people like John Cleese had massive interest in it. Now, we don't know how true that is. But... If they actually were around today, if today was their era, then they would absolutely be listening to this and be making sketches on it. They absolutely would be doing that. They would, they would be so perfect for that. So I perfect. Think, or someone like Dave Allen or someone like that. Steve Coogan was on Top Gear talking about John Cleese. And I think they were filming something like Around the World in 80 Days or something like that. And um, at the end of the shoot... Um, 
John Cleese is standing with one of the other actors and watches Steve Coogan drive off in his Ferrari. He says, Who was that gentleman in the Ferrari? And the other actor says, Oh, that's, uh, that's Steve Coogan. And uh, John Cleese says, Very talented, isn't he? And the other actor says, Yeah, he's really good, isn't it? John Cleese says, I do hope he gets cancer. <laughs> <laughs> he's talented he's talented and has a Ferrari, so the hell with him, is that it? <laughs> no, and I think it's more jealous actors, which I can speak from experience. If you see someone and go, That yeah, guy's yeah. really good, I hope he gets run over by a bus. Yeah, I oh know. Je- jealousy is massive in that arena. <laughs> Especially on stage acting. Yeah. Or co- more over, it's well, even worse be... with comedians. Far worse, in fact. Getting someone to, to, to laugh is like a drug. So for comedians, you know, I'm a bipolar to begin with, but someone else getting the laugh is like, no, I want that drug. Why are you taking my drug? I hope you die. <laughs> I want to be the one making them laugh. I'm funny. You're not funny. Go away. That's that's the attitude behind it. That that would be good though, because you know, like the video we watched earlier, the, the guy coming in mocking and taking the Mickey and the pancake. We we don't well, we do a little bit, but we don't. We, we're trying to get the point across and be a bit more serious. Whereas if you had like a John Cleese script, constantly doing this and pointing out the, you know, the oil rigs that you can see that you can't actually see, and another ludicrous things within the paradigm in a comical manner it'll just highlight how stupid uh, it all is and we're, we're just total mocking of the globe and everything that goes with it it'd be really great I mean, if, jo- if John you needed slash... it it'd be perfect I was say, if, if they are flat earthers it's a testament to not saying anything about it right because that, that, that's news to me if he is or isn't but let's pretend for the sake of this discussion that he is then that's a good argument to not say anything. You know what I mean? He's become successful, but we aren't acutely aware that, oh, yeah, John Cleese, everyone knows he's a flat earther. The fact that everyone doesn't know he's a flat earther is a, is a a testament to not speaking about the subject if he is, if you know what I mean. I heard that John Lennon was a flat earther. I heard that the Monty Boytons were flat earthers and a couple of other people from way back now, it's hard to know because I don't think I don't know if they've I don't know if they've all come out and said that they were or whatever. Uh, but at that time, during their time of uh, kind of heading into the seventies, the sixties and seventies, they would have been in contact with people at the time who were promoting uh, the European flat. Like, it's just not as documented as it is today because we have the internet. But um, Samuel Shenton in London, I mean, uh, back in the 50s and into the 60s, into the 70s, he was promoting it all the time. And Charles K. Johnson from Texas took it over from him then when Samuel Shenton got the award. But he had, like, the likes of um, that famous uh, astronomer, uh, Sir... What's his name? With the monocle? No, the heavy lad that has the monocle? Jimi Hendrix? He, he runs the... Bri- no, no, the monocle. What's his name? Oh, Famous okay. astronomer. Can't hear you, Neil. I can validate what Patrick you said Moore. about John uh, uh, in a minute. Wow. Uh, this uh, one second, my brother's though. talking right now, and I can, but what you said is the true. Closed, I'm going to validate it in a minute. Okay. Just leave me one second to get the name. Um, I think Adam said it. So Patrick Moore. Patrick Moore. Patrick Moore turned up at one of Samuel Shenton's presentations, and he was extremely interested in it. He said, this is how to debunk, he said. And um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Shaw. What's that famous writer, Shaw? Bernard Shaw. What's his name? Bernard Manning. No, sure. Come on, Nathan, stop with that nonsense. Bernard Manning. Um, oh, 
what's his name? Bernard Shaw, what's his name? I, he's a famous, he's famous anyway. Um, in Bernard li- Shaw, literary. I think he is, mate. Sorry? Uh, Ber- is it Bernard Shaw? <laughs> Bernard Shaw. I've had the same Bernard Shaw several times. I can't. He has a full, fuller name. Uh, but he turned up and he was very impressed with it. And so were others. So it's very likely that the likes of the Monty Python people turned up. Or John Lennon turned up. Do you know what I mean? At some of his things, very likely. Because he also had people in America do, you know, promoting the same thing. He was a he was a staunch Christian and promoted the Genesis. George. Uh, George Bernard Shaw. George Bernard Shaw. George Bernard, I couldn't remember. George Bernard Shaw. I just can't remember. So Patrick Moore and George Bernard Shaw. The life of me, I can never remember those two names. But, uh, but uh, yeah, there's a, uh, there was a lot of, a lot of people I read as well that you'd know the name of, turned up and were very impressed at his presentation. Um, he was promoting a, a biblical, the biblical Genesis paradigm. And so was Charles K. Johnson and his wife, who was an Australian lady, um, um, and then other people with them. Um, so, like, I mean, there's been flat earthers out there all the time promoting that this isn't, it's not, it's not a, it's not a bloody globe. You know what I mean? For a long time. But it wasn't until we turned up the, with the internet that there was real traction being able to be made. You know, the biggest danger, the internet, uh, the biggest danger the internet ever posed is us. We are the biggest danger. No doubt about it. They try and play it off. They try and make it out as if you can't talk about this subject or that subject or the other subject because they're all really, you know, uh, uh, fringe and dangerous topics. But then they try and laugh off flat earth, don't they? The media, to try and laugh, they've been trying to laugh it off, right, because that's the way they've, they've been, that's what they've been told to do, laugh it off. No, that's, it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Because that's the best defence. If I was in the shoes of the people who were trying to hide the fact, I would be doing my best to make, and I was in control of the media, I'd be looking for the media to give a, a laughing it off response. You know, make it into a comedy. No one will take it serious then. And that's that been their the... whole ploy. Well, well, they will, well, they'll talk about other things like World War II and all that, and that's deadly serious, but they won't talk about, you know, uh, flat out with a, with a serious tone, ever. Well, they're, Go they're, they're going to be mocking it in, in the cinema soon with Fly Me to the Moon. Have you seen the trailer for that? I did see some kind of a comedy about it, uh, or something about or Sorry, that it's some kind of a comedy. Um, well, it might be good. It might be a good movie. I don't know. But... Well, the, the plot of the movie is that some PR lady comes into NASA because they're not having a very good time and they're ballsing it all up and it's all going wrong. So she comes along, uh, Scarlett Johansson's character to fake the moon landings and in the trailer one of the main moon landing guys is having an interview with his actor that's going to be playing him for the filmed sections and he's saying look if you fake this this will destroy our credibility and she's like well look we've got to beat the russians (laughs) so we've got to fake it let's get these actors together so they're going through a scenario that softens the Western world up to the moon landing being faked, basically. That's the only explanation you can give for it. Well, how many times years ago, when I first got into this, in the first year or so, did I hear NASA say, when there was when their footage was called out, they said, oh, that footage was mixed up with the real footage. Uh, that, that footage was put into the, by accident, that was actually the... Uh, the rehearsal of the actual, like a, a practice run of what the real thing would be, and by accident, that spool was put into the wrong canister. Now, this kind of stuff. Oh, we played the, oh, we, by accident, we played the, the uh, rehearsal, you know, or the practice run. <laughs> Sorry about that. And, but then they never produced the real one. You know what I mean? So that, they always have that. To, that's been NASA's whole thing for years. When they're called out on that, they go, oh, that was, sorry, that was the practice run. By accident, they got mixed up with the real spool of, of filling. No, this, no, this has been their, this has been their defense. You know, and it's like, it's an unbeatable defense if you can't hold them to task, which the everyday person can't. So I could say that's a load of rubbish, but I can't prove it's a load of rubbish. 
as in via them, via them, I can't prove it's a load of rubbish because I, I can't get them to give me the real one. I can't get, I can't prove in that way that there is a that there isn't a real one. I can prove it in other ways, but I can't prove it in that way. So that's been their defence all, all all for years. Oh, you know, so it was an accident. We played the wrong we played the wrong spool of tape. It just seems like such a mad turnaround from 10 years ago, which is approximately how long ago it was that Mark Sargent released his clues. Can you remember what clue one was? Clue one was. It was Antarctica, was it? Nope. Um, oh, it was the theater, wasn't it? It was the what? The theater. The, the empty the... theater. Right. Yes. So Mark points out that between That's 1969 it. and 10 years ago, there's no Hollywood productions about man's single greatest achievement. In the last three years, we've had an official moon landing video. And uh, by video, I mean, you know, cinematography promoting the man's greatest experience that we hadn't had up until that point. And now, literally right now, we've got something that's suggestive of the idea that we fake the whole thing in a comedy. Yeah, and there's only a movie just came out in recent years. Is that what you're talking about? A movie called First Man. Yeah, it's yeah. Based on the, the, yeah. And now we have a video coming out making a comedy out of it. Yep. Within a couple of years <laughs> of each other. That's nuts. I mean, you've got to give credit where credit's due to Mark, right? I used to mock him about that particular clue. How wrong was I? No, I would quite happily sit down, and I actually might do it in the next couple of days, quite happily sit down and listen to all the clues again, because he's so entertaining. That's the thing about Mark. It's not about how precise he is, but when it comes to that, he puts a case forward that kind of can't be denied. <laughs> Yo, he does put a case forward that is hard to deny. There's something going on here, lads, is what he's basically saying. And he's so entertaining in the way he does it. He, the way he's so relaxed, it's like, He's perfect as a PR person or something. You're not going to win. Clue one. Yeah, it's a Twilight the Zone voice, the Rod Sterling voice. Yeah. Yeah, it's the Rod Sterling voice. I was just mimicking Mark. Now, let me validate your, your, your John Lennon thing. Are you familiar with the song While My Guitar Gently Weeps? It's oh, on a white album. That, that 60s know that. classic that we all love. <laughs> I'm breaking up. Okay. Go on, Neil. He said it. That's I'm breaking up. Is he gonna? Are you gonna sing it for us, Neil? No. <laughs> There was a song called Why My Gu Why My Guitar Gently Weeps from the White Album. And in one of the verses, George Harrison says, I look at the world and I notice it's turning. And John had an issue with it. To the point where George had to bring Eric Clapton in to back him up because he plays lead guitar in that song. But John did not want those lyrics in there. I did see something else that some other supposed quote from John Lennon. He was asked something he said to somebody or uh, said to a reporter or something way, way back in the 60s. Um, I think about a year or two before he p got killed. Uh, a quote where he stated, I don't know if I, I actually, I don't know if it was a quote or was it a piece of video. They did say we all live. I'm oh, sorry. No, you go ahead, Nathan, if you remember. I vaguely remember. It's something like we all live on a yellow submarine. Something like that. <laughs> I, I knew you were going to say that. I was going to go, and he's going to make a joke out of it. No, but I did well, see something. The, and... um... Sorry, on, I was just saying, like, the old um, the old classics, the fool, the fool on the Hill is another one, isn't it? The Fool on the Hill sees the sun going down and the eyes in his head see the world spinning round. That's McCartney, isn't it? So yeah, that's McCartney, but that was in the earlier years. I'll find out what time. Well, that's not that's not the so McCartney wasn't the flat earther. Yeah, John was against the, anything with the earth moving. Because he said we don't notice the earth turning. Yeah, but it's only bit pop music. 
Yeah, but what I'm talking about was something more solid than that. Excuse me, something more solid than a song lyric. It was like an actual statement. A quote from John yeah, well, you're, talk, you're talking about him right before he died. So that's yeah, many years later. Yeah, but this was when they were first so getting he, into he, it. He found it offensive. He did not want... See, Eric Clapton tells a story, but he doesn't tell you why he was giving George a hard time. Yeah, I wonder if... Uh, this, I'm going to go with tinfoil hat here, right? What about if John Lennon wanted to promote the idea that the Earth was not a globe, but a flat plane, flat stationary plane? What about if that was part of the reason why he got killed? So listen to the song Clean Up Time in his last album that he made before he got yeah, killed. Yeah, but lyrics never mean anything to me. A lyric in a song doesn't mean that. It's not a statement. It's not an outright statement that you can quote, if you know what I mean. A lyric could mean anything. It's subjective. You know, uh, whereas a, an outright statement is different. Now, I don't know. Yeah, if I heard being that the guy... hold, hold on. If you're being threatened, you got to speak in, um, like... I know what you mean. In, in, in speak in um, kind of a... Um, oh, I'm in, for too long. Oh, I can't remember the term. Memories, that's not working today. Yeah, I forgot um, the term use. Yeah, so, well, you, you must kind of uh, say something, but not... I understand what you mean. I can't, I can't describe it. Nathan can, but he just won't. I know he can do it, but he's just sitting there, not down. Now, I don't know. The guy that, that killed him said years later he regretted it and he became a Christian and all this sort of stuff, supposedly. But I don't know. I don't know what, what was going on there. And the guy was a bit crazy, supposedly. The guy, Mark Chapman, is it? Is that the guy who was claimed to have killed him? And I don't even know if that guy killed him. It's kind of like the JFK thing, you know, where, where they blame, what's his name, in the, in the book depository. And uh, it's like... Um, there's no way that the guy could have done it if you look into the details of it. It just wouldn't have been possible for him to do what he did with the gun that he had and his abilities it just and his position. It just wouldn't have been possible. So the whole thing is up in the air. Uh, but the whole, like, the John Lennon killing, people don't really say much about that. It's just like, oh, it's just a crazy... Into that, did, did you want some lyrics from him? So there's some John Lennon... Uh, what is it? Double Fantasy is the album. Watching the Wheels is the song. Do you want to hear some of the lyrics? Go on, then. Don't you miss the big time, boy. You're no longer on the ball. Hold on. That's correct. That's the good one. I was trying to think of that one. Hold on. I'm just watching here, watching the wheels go round and round. There is a little bit more. I really love to watch them roll. No longer riding on the merry-go-round. I just had to let it go. It's about as close as I can get for John Lennon. Mm. People asking questions, lost in confusion. Well, I tell them there's no problem. Only solutions. Anyway. There's not a great deal other than that particular merry-go-round quote. Can I give you the clean-up time, the lyrics? You what? The song clean-up time. Moonlight on the water, sunlight on my face. You and me together, we are in our place. The gods are in the heavens, angels treat us well. Oracle has spoken, we cast the perfect spell. Come on. This guy is awesome. He said you didn't quite catch the end bit, I'm afraid. Neil? Hi. My yep. brother's talking right now, so yeah. it won't sound Same. good. Yeah, it hasn't sounded good from the beginning. Every time you open up your mic, then you, then you go along with Nathan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't hear what Nathan's saying. 
I can't hear Nathan talking. I'm in a truck. Sorry. Well, that was what great. he's basically saying in that song, Clean Up Time, is it's time to clean it all up. Yeah, they did take quite a lot of drugs, though, didn't they, Neil? It could just be vomit that they're talking about. Would, it, would he be talking about microphones? Yeah, it's hard to paint that and down, you know, that kind of way. Paint that and onto one. Hard to paint that and onto them. Because it, it, uh, lyric, as I say, lyrics don't, to me, never mean anything. It's like a hidden message. It's like. All right, whatever. what about this, Brian? What about this? Ready? However far we travel, wherever we may roam, the center of the circle will always be our home. That's interesting, you know. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, it talks about oh, God and the, uh, on his coffin making a circle of the earth, carving out the, the circle uh, of the earth. The Auga, right? Like from the mass. Book God sits carried. above the circle of the earth where they yeah, try to make it a ball. Going to be out. Yeah. But they still, whacked on not, Lennon. It, it's still not a quote, still not like a piece of footage where he, a real piece of footage, not some AI nonsense, but he literally states, you know, that he, that the earth is flat. It's still not that. That's the problem. Because he couldn't, but they killed him anyway. Encrypted. You got to speak in like, what is it, cryptic language? Hidden messages, yeah. I just, for me, it's just not, um, I just, for me, a lyric just don't do it. You know, I need a, a solid statement. You know what I mean? That I can use. You know, it's a bit like, Nick, like Tesla was a flat earther. I remember people used to be promoting that back in 2015. And I, I, I was, I said it once, I said recently, I said it to my friend. My friend said, yeah, where's the proof of that? And I went, hang on, I, I couldn't find any. Because, <laughs> People were pre-assuming stuff over statements he had made, but weren't in particular to the topic. So I had to admit, I didn't have any evidence for it. So maybe Nikola Tesla was a flat earther. Or I have no proof for it. So it's no good to me. You're not going to wait. What I noticed is all these supposed well-known people, there's no one there that you can really, without, without the exception, exception of Samuel Shenton and, you know, uh, uh, Robotham and uh, pa um, you know, uh, um, uh, Richard K. Johnson, is it? And, you know, these kind of people who were outright flat earthers, with the exception of them, where are all these other people? There was people who were flat earthers, but they never said it. There's no doubt about that. You know what I mean? Even with the Monty Python, I've seen something as well about them. Um, and even at that, nothing is, nothing is solid. People in general have no backbone. They just won't. They just won't. Just come out and stay at it. So I walk out of my house and, yeah, anyone ask me, absolutely. No doubt about it. You know, I'm not going to be uh, humming and how horn about it or, you know, there's going to be a direct statement of absolute yes. You know, whereas, you know, a lot, a lot of people just like, they won't state publicly. They just won't state it publicly. And I think it's weak. If you're hearing this, it is weak. I think you're weak. Yeah, it is weak. It is That's weak. why we had such an objection yeah. to Dave Weiss not saying it when he's supposed to be one of our representatives. He'd be the first person you'd expect to be able to say, yeah, of course it's flat. I know it's flat. Yeah, it's, 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 for me, it's a sign of weakness. It's like, what, you, you, you don't have the backbone? To so just stand by your convictions? And yeah, you, you don't even, it's not your convictions, you have literally evidence, measurement. You know what I mean? No end of evidence. There's not bought evidence for it, but you won't come out and just state it. And, and even some of the famous people, like Shaquille O'Neal came out and said it, then suddenly he had to go back on it a week later because there was a load of people who were 
his sponsors were going to, you know, whatever sports companies, whatever, uh, were going to uh, drop him because of it. And he went back on what he said. It's like, no, I mean, he's plenty, you're plenty rich already, Shaquille. I mean, you're not going to have a hard time finding employment if you need it. You're plenty rich already. You don't even need money. So why did you feel the need to go back on what you stated? Because what he stated seemed to be true. He seemed to be honest with what he was stating. And suddenly he had to go back on it. And there was a few others. Now, there's been plenty of people that come out and said it, and they never went back on it. There was a couple of boxers and other, sp- other sports people that came out and said it. Uh, what's his name? He plays for the Celtics now. He's one of the most famous basketballers in recent years. Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving. Yeah. There's a, so there is, there is people out there who come out and said it. Now, they don't continually talk about it, but they have come out and said it. They've come out and stated, yeah, I'm a flat earther. There was a, a, an ex-heavyweight uh, uh, from England. Uh, what's his name? Um, uh, um, oh, I can't remember the man's name now. It's starting with an F. His surname starts with an F. Is it Carl Frock? Carl Frock. Cobra Frock. Carl Frock, yes. Carl Frock, yeah. So there is people that do come out and say it. Uh, that, uh, that, you know, they do have a voice, but so many people out there who don't say it. It's like, you know, you have to have, a, it's weak. You have to have a backbone. Yeah, but if there's plenty of people like Candice Owens who are poised to say, yeah, I know it's flat. It, they'll be the straw that breaks the camel's back when there's been plenty of media influence for the last 10 years that people have wanted to suppress in their own mind. But when somebody that they're familiar with says it quite comfortably, they're like, oh, yeah, I can I can get behind that now. No worries. And the, well, the tides change oh, radically and quickly. Absolutely. Because uh, I, I reckon... Now, I'd love to have the opportunity to correct her on what she thinks science is and to give her information concerning the measurement of Earth and all this kind of stuff. But really, I was thinking, all I'd really need to, to really open her eyes, not that her eyes aren't opening already or opened already, to, but to really get her the ball rolling, would be the clip from Congress in 2019. Because if she heard that, like, she'd be what? You know what I mean? Because she's very like she's very attuned to uh, anything like that, any 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 kind of um, um, any suppression of the freedom of speech. Yeah, media manipulation. Yes, she be on that, and it, it, I'm hoping that somebody like because it's not looking like I'm going to get the opportunity, but I'm hoping somebody gets that clip to her. Goes, listen here, 2019. Why would they be doing this? And that will, even if she goes down the, the face the nonsense rabbit hole, which she's likely to do, I don't know. And she is a Christian or Catholic anyway. She's constantly, she reads, reads and follows the Bible. Um, so, uh, and she did say, I think if I remember in, in the in the twelve minute thing she did on Sunday that that the uh, it's, it's congruent with the Bible basically. Um, but that, that clip alone, that would be enough. To co- that clip alone would be enough to cause, to cause uproar. But she's just not aware of it. Because I've heard her talking last night about stuff to do with uh, NASA and their, and their occult origins. Now, all that stuff to me, it's, it to me is like, it doesn't, it doesn't hold weight that much with me because NASA don't mean much to me. Right? Um, and I understand for somebody who didn't know those things, it's shocking information. You know, when she gets to Werner von Braun, <laughs> what he has on his headstone, Sam's 19 and the, and the firmament showing his handiwork. <laughs> you know what I mean? Things like that. She's going to have that on her show, so maybe there's no stopping the conspiracy feast and nonsense type stuff. Not that that, not that, that isn't on his headstone, and not that these oper- military operations didn't take place, which are very strange military op- operations. It's just that... It's just that... It leads her into the prove. first step, doesn't it? it, it if you're attacking yeah. that, then what, what's the response? What's the pushback? Right? Well, the pushback is, we've got photos from space, followed by, do rockets work in space? 
and we've got satellites. From, it, suddenly there's a whole space-based argument that she'll find herself in. Do you know what I mean? So it's like you're not you're not decrying the facts that she's stated. You're decrying the feast of nonsense path that she's taken the first step on, right? Yeah, I'm trying to... I'm trying to steer. I'm trying to get into a position where I can stop her ending up talking about ether, right? That's what I'm trying to do, because technically that would end up being an embarrassment for the girl. She doesn't deserve that. You know what I mean? And she, if she, if I could just relay the correct information to her, you know, because she will very likely be led to believe that ether has some connection to flat Earth when it doesn't. There's no connection to the topic. Just people are trying to. Connect it, right? Uh, Trying to use flat out to spring as a springboard for this nonsense, right? Uh, but if I, I, there might be no stopping her arguing about whether rockets work in a vacuum instead of not realizing, hang on a minute, there just isn't a vacuum because there can't be. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, but she will, I would say she probably will get to that point where she'll probably go through the steps. But that one clip alone would be enough to, because I reckon the pushback she would get from a load of unknown ball, ballers, right, who will be attacking her and trying to, trying to, I'll help you with this information. And she, she already has zero trust in all these type of people, all these supposed online experts, you know, and all these supposed experts in general. You know, she, you know, she, she has no trust in those already. So the big pushback she would get there would be enough to spur her on, to do more, to look more. And as you said, it's people like her addressing the topic, because people like her addressing the topic is is the straw that will break the camera's back. Because how popular is she with, with, with people who are in their it's, 20s? It's, it's not just, yes, that's an aspect of it. It's not just that, though. It's moreover that you picture 10 years ago when there was, again, people like Dave Weiss saying, we're going to go from zero to 100 overnight. You know, there's going to be masses of people coming to the subject really quickly. Well, unfortunately, no, they need to be primed. They need to have heard the information and heard some of the discussions and the the debates and, you know, heard some of the proofs. That has to have filtered out to the masses on some scale for someone like Candice Owens to come along, start talking about it and have it be automatically accepted by her audience because they've already been immunised to it prior to her bringing it up. And for all the people, it's like I've seen it before in straw polls that people have done of their audience and found out that 50% of the people in their audience are flat earthers. And when there's complete anonymity for a like a straw poll for their chat, they'll happily just stick their vote because it's anonymous and nobody's going to know. And it turns out that they've got 50% of their audience who are flat earthers and they're horrified. Like, no, there is going to be a, a, an, an undercurrent of people who do know about the subject and if they were, would perhaps lie. Because they realise they're not stupid. They know the social implications that you become a pariah if you end up talking about it. So they go, oh, no, definitely. I know it's a globe. But deep down, they think, no, I've, I've actually looked at this subject and there's a lot to it. But I better not say it. I don't want to be considered to be a stupid idiot. So I'll just keep my mouth shut. And then their favourite videographer starts talking about it. And they go, oh, it's OK to talk about this now. Oh, OK, well, I will. Yeah. Suddenly, half the population are talking about it. And it's that scenario I gave five years ago where there's... Three people talking about a bus stop. Uh, sorry, five people sat at a bus stop. One starts talking to the other and ridiculing him about his flat earth belief. And the other three go, actually, I think the earth's flat. Yeah, so do I. And they all start scowling at him. And the guy at the bus stop that automatically assumed everybody around him would back him in his globe nonsense, so suddenly scowling at him. And suddenly the tables turn very quickly. Yeah. At that point, if that happens, this is all speculative, the people who have got the most disgusting behaviour and vile tendencies, they're going to be stamped out of society right quick. Because suddenly it's glaringly obvious how abhorrent their behaviour is. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that day is, is, is very close now. Because the amount of the amount of people in their 20s that are flat out are is monstrous. And there's more people, again, I would say, that are teenagers that are flat out are. Because they've grown up, with, they've grown up in an age where they were given an up, where there was a different option from the globe. We were when I grew up and you grew up, and probably most of us with our ages, there wasn't a different option. It was just it was a globe, and that's it. 
you know what I mean? It's not until we came across the idea and gave it a moment that it was like, hang on a second. You know what I mean? Uh, for me, I mean, it was like eight seconds. But the point is, is that I had denied it to myself without realizing I was denying it to myself with my experiences throughout my younger years. Yeah, that's but, true. We didn't even have a shot, right, Brian? We were just well, told yes. it's a globe and that's it. Exactly. You were, there was no other option. Whereas now the younger people in the past 10 years have had an option. So if you were now 25, then if you were now 24, let's just say, then when you were 14, this subject turned up on the internet. By the time you, by the time you were 16, you would heard about it. You know what I mean? And you're now 24, eight years later. I mean, and you're on TikTok. You're watching stuff on TikTok. And you're on YouTube, obviously, but you're on X and TikTok and YouTube. There's no way that you're. On, I mean, the fact that the option is there, the fact that, and there's and the thing about this this subject is there's constant information coming out. Like there's constant demonstrations being done and new ways to demonstrate things, and there's constant information coming out. You know, it, I'm not saying the, the information we have now that we talk about now, it might take a couple of years before it permeates into general society, but it is permeating. You know, people will be pointing out, well, it's measured flat. They measure it as a flat stationary plane. They measure a horizontal plane with topography above and below it. You know I mean? It will be something, you know, it's only a matter of time. And with the likes of TikTok and all that, it, it, how are you going to stop it? Just to, uh, no, hi Brian. Just to go, to, just to go back on what the Candice you were saying, like um, even if she went down the the Bible route, which I think that's a good point, really, because when I got into flat Earth, I I did not connect um, the Bible, but you know the creation story and the Creator at all. I didn't, you know, even though I was brought up a Catholic, and you know went in and out of church and and all this. I didn't connect the two dots and, and, until I got into Flat Earth. Uh, yeah, um, I think he actually wrote a little bit of a poem about it called Nathan's Nightmare for some reason. But what I'm getting at is, um, and I used to, in, in the early days, you know, uh, when I was falling out with family members and having fights with friends and people out and about about this Flat Earth, Rather than getting into the nitty gritty, sometimes I did. Why are you flat Earth? And what makes you think the Earth is flat? Sometimes, not not, it's a, not that it's in. I'm saying it's an easy option or a, a cop out, but sometimes just to say, well, <laughs> it tells you it's uh, immovable and stationary in the Bible. The Creator tells you it is in the Bible, and just leave it at that. So sometimes it's a nice way just to, without getting into an argument, it, it's written in Scripture and it explains it like that. I just wanted to say that. I mean, obviously, that wouldn't be your standard today. No. No. I mean, I very rarely uh, take that stance anyway. You know, not now we've, we've got measurements for that. You know. But for, for some people and just for some people who are just touching on it, maybe a celebrity, it might be just a, a way in and it'll just get people uh, thinking a little bit more about that. I'm not a Christian myself. Um, and I'm not a reader of the Bible, but I know for definite that there'd be no way I could be a Christian and be, I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't square that circle if I was a Christian and a heliocentrist. I just couldn't do it. I just know it wouldn't be possible. And I know that there are so many people out there who are trying to square that circle and they just won't be able. They yeah, either have can't. to drop helios, heliocentrism or drop Christianity. Go on, dude. Yeah, you can't because there's nowhere in the Bible that promotes heliocentrism anywhere. Yeah, it's just not our standard, though. Yeah, but I understand what Brian's saying. And um, I just don't get it. I do get it because they've been duped with pseudoscience and somehow they're connecting science with the shape of Earth. When we, well, I learned here that it's a category error. 
But Candace Owens, I think if she was to understand the scientific method, she would change how she feels. She would realize that, oh, it's cause and effect. It's proving what is. Yeah. I mean, how, why, not what is. Exactly. That's information I really would really, if I had to, if I had to tell her something, if I got two minutes to tell her something, I'd have to lay out this, the, the problem. The, I'd have to go into her problems with science. Because that would be all, like, after that, like, that would be so strong. It would be, the, it would be a first step on a different path, right? So, right. no, it's not going to yeah. offer her everything. But in the same way, currently, she stepped onto a nasty debunking path, and we all just go, ooh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but ooh, that could be a pretty dirty path that you're about to embark on that journey via. Ugh. However, if you had two minutes with her and you started out by saying something to the effect of, you've recently decried science and you're so close because what you're actually decrying is pseudoscience. Science proves things, and people who haven't got proof use the words of science to claim they have. Learn what the scientific method is, and you'll know how people have hijacked this terminology to make you think they've proved things. You've spotted that they haven't got proof. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Science proves they just didn't have any. Oh, well done ruining the end of it, Neil. Thank you so much. Sorry. I'll trim that Sorry. out you did next time I say seconds. it without an interruption. I'd suggest you now leave a stony silence, Neil. That's just perfect. You took a breath. Oh, you say boo. No breathing on the show, please. Yeah, I agree, Nathan. Uh, the best thing to hand kind of stones would be the scientific method. Because she would run with that. And that's the start of a new road, exactly. You know, this is what they hoodwinked with you with. This is what they... This is, this is, this is the scam. You know, once you realize that scam, the other things become easier to see through. Yeah. When you're looking at things like this, this the aspect she's picked is the how. How have we been deceived? And she's gone, science has deceived us. And she's so close, isn't she? So you go, okay, I'll go with that. You, you, you want to step onto the how of this story, not the who, not the where, not the why, but the how. How is with science... This is how they did it. They took a term that meant proof and hijacked it when they didn't have any proof and just used the words that we're all trained as kids to know it proves things. So when they say in an advert, here comes the science part, you'll go, oh, here comes the proving it empirically part then. No, it doesn't. They've just nicked the word to make you think they've proven it when they haven't. Exactly. And... Her platform, because she is not just, it's because she's brought on to other shows. Even if someone doesn't watch Candace Owens, she will turn up on the podcast or YouTube show that they do watch. Because she will be brought in there for an interview or for, as a guest. And if she's promoting this everywhere, and it's something that can't be denied, like, people can try and deny that the earth is flat, right? But they can't deny scientific method. <laughs> you can't deny it. I saw, it I is saw what her, it is. Um, uh, on a clip with Piers Morgan. And if you know anything about Piers Morgan, he's your mainstream rumpuser and loves to cut people off, etc. And he did it to her. And it wasn't related to our topic. I think she was talking about... Um, who was she, talking? she was talking about a pop star. The one we were talking about earlier at clone centers, Taylor Swift and Pierce uh, Morgan's putting it to her that, you know, she's been wronged and, and she, she, she basically starts explaining that she's got a father who's got a contract and within that contract is the ownership of the rights to the records. 
he signed over those rights when he sold that company. She would have been well aware of it. And she has gone out and weaponized all these kids to bleat and moan on her behalf. It's an outrage. As she's in the middle of explaining this, Piers Morgan starts talking through her. And she sits up on a chair and says, with a, uh, what's the word, a s visual symbol, like she puts her hand out, raises her voice, just half a semitone, and shuts him down in the most assertive way she could have done. Right? It was absolutely spectacular. The hand, hairs on the back of my neck stood up when she did it. I was like, whoo! I've never seen anybody do that with Pierce Morgan, ever. Yeah, she she made, he, he made an idiot of himself when he was interviewing her. He even brought up his education, not realising that she had actually more education than him. He said, well, I have a, I have a degree in journalism and blah, 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 blah. But she, not realising that she also has a degree in journalism. She, she said she never bought it. She just didn't say it to him. She said, because she doesn't throw it back on that. She doesn't, she doesn't view that as uh, something. I like, the more she I hear about this person, the more I like her. So she's got class. Yeah. She's she, just, she just about, sat there and left them off. Probably would have. So I was just saying about Piers Morgan, and I don't know if it's already been on, but just talking about how he is and nobody can get a word in. It's either been on or it's coming on, and he's, he's, he's in talk with Roger Waters out of Pink Floyd. It's like a proper, you, you know, an activist type of person. So I've seen some things popping up where Roger Waters destroys Piers Morgan, so I'm really looking forward to watching that. If it's not been on, then that'd be really good, if you know anything about Roger Waters, like. Yeah, I like Roger Waters. I've seen him do interviews about, not necessarily about his music, although it is. But the bit I was always interested in when he talks is how he does his sound engineering. Amazing material that on a really good stereo just will blow your mind in terms of what it can do. With two speakers, you can have stuff that's positioned all around the room. So I remember the first time I had um, one of his albums... I, you know, it was at a time when I was just buying hundreds of albums and you just stick them on one after the next. You're not really paying that much attention. And I remember hearing this, this like conversation happening off behind me. Well, what the bloody hell's going on? And it's looking around, you're trying to figure out what's going on. And it suddenly occurred to me that this is recorded that way. So from two speakers that are in front of you, you've got a sound that's coming from behind you and to the right. Now, how the hell does that even work? And, uh, yeah, him explaining how that works in engineering terms, so I always found really fascinating. It's like hi-fi nirvana, getting things to position themselves beyond the cabinets of the speakers and in the room. That's like that's what you're trying to achieve. And he he did that with, with engineering that would make it do that in a really crap setup. Just very clever guy, very clever engineer. I know he's a musician, but from an engineering point of view, what he would do with his music is just out of this world. And I don't think anybody's done it since as well either. Now, what we're we talking in the 70s, maybe into the 80s. It's so like a fair old amount of time ago, and that was, as far as I'm concerned, the pinnacle of, of production of sound. That was as good as it got. Doesn't, it hasn't got better since. It's got worse, considerably worse, thanks to Oasis. Anyway. Enough about music. Someone mentioned Roger Waters, so what can you do? I hate yeah, I Dark think... Side of the Moon Sorry. with a passion. That's just been my last gripe. Right, The Dark Side of the Moon album, which is an exceptionally good album. I'm not going to moan about that, the quality of it. It's a great album. However, lots of hi-fi enthusiasts would walk into the shop when I was selling hi-fi retail, actually working in a shop on a high street. People would come in to buy a hi-fi and they'd be like, oh yeah, I've got my, got my music with me. I've got something really exciting. Have you heard of Dark Side of the Moon? And like, oh God, no, not for the thousandth time. No, please. Oh yeah, yeah, I love that album. It's great. Yeah, let's put it on and listen to it. <laughs> like, not again, please. It's all people used to come in with and they'd think that they were special. <laughs> like, have you heard of this? No, no. <laughs> I've never heard it before. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, as a result, I hated that album. I've never been a, a fan of Pink Floyd because it was always people who were smoking weed wanted me to listen to them. It's just like, this is really boring. That's all it was going to my head. This is super boring. It's not inspiring me to do anything. You know? It's not inspiring me to, you know, 
to, to break down a wall with a sledgehammer. It's not inspiring me to drive the car, to go out running or something. I don't know. It's not inspiring me to get active. You know what I mean? It's just like listening to this thing doesn't... It, it inspires you to get up and make you know. a cup of tea after about four and a half minutes of an introduction. Yeah, it's kind of like a cup of coffee and a joint of weed kind of nonsense. It's just like, nah, it's that's the amount of inspiration. It's just like boring. Oh, that wasn't the, I never saw that side of it because presumably those people aren't rich. Whereas the, the shops I worked in were only selling extremely expensive equipment. So the people who came in weren't stoners. They were well heeled, rich people. And they'd, they'd, you know, they'd walk in with several thousand pounds to drop on something to just play this CD. And they've probably only got 10 CDs in their entire collection, which was the thing that used to bug me the most. The people who were the most enthusiastic about music and I would have hundreds and thousands of CDs and records. They didn't care about how the hi fi sounded, they cared about playing the music. Um, whereas the people who come in that would actually care about the presentation of the sound, you know, we get people coming in that would play sound effects. You're like, why are you playing this? Oh, because I really know how well this this um, track five with the glass smashing sounds, so I can compare hi fi's. You're like, what? <laughs> this is nuts, right? But if you've got money, that's what people do. They're like looking for. A sound from a system they're buying a system it's like isn't it a means to an end aren't you just aren't you buying it to play music on it there we go well, it's like when surround surround sound first came in wasn't it when you had speakers around your room and your super woofer and that was a big thing back then wasn't it watching a film and the sounds right wrapped around you you know that was a, a big thing back in the day yeah that's what i used to have to flog I used to take people down and show them it came up in one of the comments of the other day, actually, because I'd, I'd used an example where um, in either the first or second hi-fi shop I worked in, uh, in my hometown, they had a, a basement with a, a really expensive projector and a line doubler and, you know, I don't know, it's probably 50 grand's worth of stuff in the late 90s. Re probably be 200 grand today to do the same thing. And, you know, you'd be chatting to somebody about what you did and, in the showroom at the front, there wasn't any of the stuff you didn't know there was this room hidden downstairs in the basement. And they'd be like, oh, you're never going to convince me to spend a thousand pounds on a projector. And like, well, oh, yeah, I could definitely do that easily. And they'd be like, no, you couldn't. I've got a really top quality forehead VHS recorder and a 32 inch tube TV from Sony. It's got a square tube. It's fantastic. You're not going to get a better picture. You go, oh, yeah. Now, Star Wars at the time was, was fairly popular, although it was reasonably old movie it'd be like comparing the matrix these days but then it was still you know new enough to be you know being remastered and on laser disc and all the rest of the stuff so people would be familiar with star wars they'd have the like with pink floyd they'd have the vhs cassette <clears throat> so we had a very carefully picked cav edition that was i don't know 300 quid of of star wars on laser disc it was very very expensive and we played it on a, I don't know, £2,000 laser disc machine through a line doubler. So it looked outstanding. And one of the things that stuck in people's minds was the, the silver leg, because they'd never noticed. Now, as soon as you put it on a really high quality picture through a laser disc, people would notice all sorts of details like that that they'd never noticed on their VHS cassette. Now, when they watched it at the cinema, They've never seen it before, so they're not taking in details that they hadn't noticed before. It's a brand new film to them. So the fact that a robot's got a wonky silver leg, no one's going to notice that. It's just part of the, you know, you're paying attention to the story, you're taking in the explosions, you're not paying attention to those details. And when it comes out on VHS and those details have gone, you just, you just, that's how you remember the movie. But that was my job to show somebody details in pictures that they hadn't seen before. And I used to totally rely on the equipment to do it because I'm completely colorblind. So in <laughs> in a later shop, not the one in my hometown, a similar scenario, right? You've got probably even more expensive, probably a hundred grand's worth of um, uh, projection equipment and line doubles. Same same scenario, right? And I've got this set up for a specific demonstration, and I'm looking at it, going, "This looks amazing. It sounds wicked. I've done a really good job. I've just got to wait for the customer to come." Customer turns up, and I'm giving him the bull, giving him the whole. It's going to be fantastic. You're going to love it. I walk him in, press play, and do my thing. Shut the door, seal it all off from the outside noises, and go and make myself a cup of tea. It's like, great, finally the customer's here. I can, I can wait for him to finish watching the section of movie, come out and ask me for a drink or whatever he's going to do. 
Within two minutes, he comes out. He goes, I think there's something wrong. I'm like, surely not. <laughs> and I walk in, look at the screen. It looks brilliant. It looks absolutely ace. Sounds amazing. And he goes, it's in black and white. I'm like, oh, is it? <laughs> right. <laughs> Better get that sorted then. So I had to call one of the other staff members. I'm like, um, yeah, I've definitely done something wrong, but I haven't noticed because <laughs> it's in black and white. And I just, as far as I was concerned, I was so familiar with the film. I just see the colours where, you know, I've made them up in my mind what they look like. And whether or not they're there in reality is irrelevant. <laughs> it could be completely grayscale as it was. And I wouldn't know the difference. So I put it in front of this customer. He's like, yeah, the Matrix is in black and white. Like, literally black and white. That's the new version, mate? Well, definitely not. That was the 1909 version. We got on this from Roger Waters. Can't believe that. It's because me really in my glory day selling hi-fi. But it's like, I mean, just the one last thing on me. It's like the recording studios, little recording studios, and you got about the sound and bouncing off. They're, they're not. Uh, they, it's the angle of the room and the and the walls that are a certain angle um, to reduce like uh, any sound coming out of the room. It has to be in a certain angle, the the room, uh, and a certain material on the inside, and that stops any sort of sound penetrating outside. It's all to do with the angle of the room. Not exactly. I don't know what the angle you, is. You're talking about. If, if you reduce the angle of the room, you change the orientation of the standing waves in the room. So the dimensions change. Therefore, the frequencies that bounce between the walls will vary as the room narrows. Lower frequencies at the wider end, higher frequencies at the narrower end. So it just means that you're, you're altering the arrangement of the standing waves if you angle the walls. That was done in one of... That, that was actually done in the... Same dem, the same facility, but not the same dem room that I just explained in black and white. At the front of the shop, there was another dem room that was done like that. So we had a guy, an acoustician, came in and designed it, and he angled all the walls. And it, there was no acoustic treatment in it, so it didn't work. Um, nevertheless, that particular room, we did a demo once in there, and one of the subwoofer manufacturers came in with their biggest sub that they did. It was absolutely enormous. And it, they did the demo in this tiny little room. And I remember it like it was yesterday, right? They played a movie, I can't remember which, it wasn't The Matrix, but something similar with a big explosion in it. And this explosion went off, and it, as you'd imagine, it shook the entire building. But this was a row of shops, and all of the other shopkeepers came out of their shops because they thought someone had smashed into the front of one of the buildings, like in a car. Like there'd been a big, They thought there'd been a big car accident. <laughs> so just from this one subwoofer it was like one cone it was massive like 15 inch giant cone and it just shook the shook the foundations of this entire row of shops to the point where all the shopkeepers came out i love sub bass it's amazing you good fun yeah i like the way you like um I don't know how I'm going to say this, but it's, it's great how you, if you get onto music, Nathan, or sounds and everything, you absolutely love it. You keep talking for ages and ages and ages. Um, we used to have a, I used to, one of my, when I was younger, one of my refrigeration managers, he was, he was into fishing. And we used to go into the office in the mornings and sometimes you couldn't be bothered getting, a, you used to get a list of jobs to go through throughout the day, but, and he used to be hushing everyone off. But I used to stay a bit behind and get onto the fishing topic with him. You know, did you go fishing this week, Tom? And um, I'd find like two hours later, everybody had gone out on jobs. And I was still there having my third cup of coffee, talking to Tom about his uh, fishing activities over the weekend. And so I reckon if you was my refrigeration manager, I'd just start talking about Roger Waters and sound. And I'd be able to just sit in the brew room with you for a few hours and not go to work. I would spot that. I'd know what you were doing. I've been a manager. I was a temporary, what we call here, a temporaries consultant, which basically means a manager for about 30 people out doing temporary jobs that you've put them in. So my job was to go out and find people who needed work done and then find a, a temporary employer employee to put into that position. So you'd have to... But the, the, the long and short of it is they're not, uh, they're not managed by the person that they're working at. They're managed by me. So you have to deal with all the stupid crap that any, any other manager's got to deal with. They have to deal with people and their gripes. I mean, I've done several management roles, actually. I was just one of them, but that was actually, I think that was the first. And dealing with all these people and their problems as a manager just gets really grating really quickly. And 
all people do all day long is try it on. Most of them, not all of them, most of them are just angling for something. You know what I mean? I didn't enjoy being a manager. Anyway, you're going to need a flat earth for all that, mate. Yeah, second passion, isn't it? Hi-fi after flat earth. Uh, does sound travel horizontally over the surface level in between eye level? Depends on the frequency. The lower the frequency, the more omnidirectional it is. The higher the frequency, the more directional. So super high frequencies have got very low energy and can travel very short distances, but very directionally, like a bird cheeping. Whereas if you imagine a, a truck going by, that will shake everything in, in, in all directions. Why'd you ask? Because I, I just seem to think nowadays, you know, the fact that the earth is uh, flat and measured like that, and that's where we live in and everything, <laughs> pardon the pun, revolves around that. Um, everything just fits in with it. So, you know, you know, line of sight, the globe oh, calculator, everything. Okay, yeah, flat. yeah, I, got, I think I understand your question. Sound propagation is described yeah, flat also. Absolutely. Uh, some of the diagrams, yeah. maybe I shouldn't say this, some of the diagrams I've robbed that go through some of the slideshows and in the videos that I have is, aren't actually visual ones. No one's noticed, never called me on it, but they're actually audio ones. So they're like, they're describing the plane of reference for your audio. It's just like I say, no one's noticed. And I'm like, oh, that's good enough. <laughs> it's got a head in it. <laughs> the fact that it's describing it from the ear rather than the eye, it doesn't make any difference. Mm. It's just when I, I said to you a few weeks ago, and I, I, I said, "Am I going too far?" When I ask people the time, and then they explain that they're going to need a, you know, a flat horizontal, flat level Earth to fall time. But that, I was saying that as like, "Oh, am I going too far?" Is this not, not at all? It's correct. No. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's correct. But and now, so now I'm looking at other things. Well, if I can say time, you're going to need you, flat time requires a flat Earth, requires a flat Earth, basically flat level horizontal earth to, to to gauge time that's what's required so everything else must require a sound anything yeah but it's time's a better one i think that that, as, much, as much as i like sound time is far better it intrinsically ties yeah. into the mapping system it ties into the celestials it ties into day and night ties into seasons times into ties into everything and it's can and it's a, a convention we've derived ourselves so you can start with flat earth measurements, show the implications, how it's utilised flat. Everything about it's flat. Time is wonderful. Props to you. I don't know if someone else, Brian, will probably tell me, oh, it's no point in being here. I was the one that went through this six years ago. <laughs> no, it didn't work. Oh, he's not here. No. Uh. But it does throw people when you ask them what time it is and, and you explain that, well, that's derived from a, a, a flat level horizontal earth. It just, you, all you get is a big pause straight away. Because you can't believe you've just said that. It's a, it, mentally, it's because our it own would, floodgates it, opening, isn't it? As we realise that everything requires a flat earth. And it's just a case of looking yeah. at it and going, where's the connection? Oh, there it is. It didn't take long. Um, and that's happening every day. And you see him more and more and more. It's like um, like Neo seeing the Matrix. You know, you just suddenly see, it. oh, it's everywhere. <laughs> right? Flat Earth is absolutely everywhere. And it makes sense that it is that way. And, they've, and suddenly it does make a lot more sense why they've had to brainwash in the way that they have, constantly dripping it into the public, giving it you from birth. Why do they have to go to such great extents? Because you're overcoming the obvious. That's why. So once those floodgates break, I can I can understand the sentiment of people who originally thought, wow, this is such a big deal that everyone will suddenly wake up to it because it's so obvious. But no, you know, the brainwashing is good, 
the the model does back engineer into the flat plane measurements that are utilized so it's functionally operational in their minds as long as you ignore the steps of utilization and measurement of flat earth then you can have the presupposition of a spherical surface to stand on as the forefront the the, the starting point in the mind's eye of anybody who's been brainwashed with it so to overcome that you do have to prime everybody with the uh, comprehension of how normal it is to be flat so that people aren't thinking wow the world has fundamentally changed around me this is too much it's like no you've got to get them to the point where they're already subtly recognizing it anyway toying with the idea and then as brian and i were discussing earlier someone like candace owens comes out and just says yeah of course it is and everyone around goes oh that's so cool to talk about now then everyone's cool with that and then the person next to him goes oh yeah i knew that ages ago and they go, oh, cool then. Oh, right. Oh, don't need to worry anymore. <laughs> and then suddenly 90% of the population are like, yeah, we all knew it was flat all along. The other 10% being glaringly obvious in terms of their hideous nature. Societally unacceptable as it stands. People, I don't know how they've got away with being so vile to flat earthers for 10 years, but they have socially acceptable uh, mr anderson in his response video to you said that he was happy to debate you has he turned up yet no not that i know of. i don't keep that much i i do watch the chat but i don't know he may have come and gone without me noticing but no one's muted upon entry that's a shame i'm sure he'll be here any minute now Um, um, so who's this uh, sensual and what's his, uh, what's he forthcoming with? The guy, uh, Nathan did a video on the other day of a lawyer from America. That was a great short oh, video, yeah. Nathan. Very funny. The, 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 uh, I, I can't missed, remember what um, I make, to be honest. I can't remember what happened yesterday. Did I make a short video on him? Yeah, and he said oh, yeah. how the almanacs and measures using a plane of reference and that yeah. we're not stood in the centre of the earth and how when we take the, the measurements. Just found it. Just pause it and cue it up on screen. Hold on a second. I Just while you're doing that, Nathan, I, I enjoyed listening. To, well, I missed a lot of it and I don't know if you've got a video of it yet. I've just been busy, but the... the um, Refractive curvature and um, what's his name? Covered it um, yesterday. We'd literally do yeah, response I, to I it. Yeah, I caught bits of it, but yeah, I missed a lot of it. Is it is that out there to watch now? If you remember, it is. Oh, right. I got this. Do you right, this? Yeah. Is this I'll what you were talking about? Those observations that were used to derive all those ground yes. positions for all those stars, that is just the position that an observer would need to be on the ground in order for that given star to be 90 degrees directly above his head at a given time. Those were all derived at observatories where they used levels to make sure their instruments were flat and they took very precise measurements because you need very precise measurements in order to have very accurate almanacs. See that we're not standing in it, we're standing on it. And that point in the middle, the, yeah, that's the center of the earth. And yeah, you do need to use, like, you know, you do need to use that point to measure angles off of. But that's not where you are. You hear that, Mr. Anderson? That is the sound of inevitability. Oh my God! I mean, you just listen to that, That's don't fantastic. you? Think what the hell is going? What's going through their minds? <laughs> well, obviously they've got to get really accurate measurements, and they they're flat to do it. He's and it will be it the, to you. Yeah, it will be the yeah, it will be the surface of Earth. It will be flat and horizontal, but it is being done from the center of a globe in hell. Okay then. Was that on his rebuttal? Are they actually... Look, 10 Hello? years ago, that would have whistled... We'd have whistled past the graveyard of him saying, you know, they level the uh, telescopes, therefore they get accurate measurements for a globe that we're in. Now, in years gone by, we'd have attacked the last statement for the globe that I'm in. As opposed to, okay, 
So you measure it flat then. Only in the last six months that we've stopped immediately accepting their apologetics for how flat they needed to be to start their process off and just letting them have it. Now we go, hold on, stop, stop, stop. What's that? Level the tool. To what? You haven't got that on a globe. That's it. So you need a flat plane to level it to. Yeah, yeah, it's referencing a plane. So you need to reference a plane then. Well, that's it. Game over. Well, no, no, no. Once I've measured Earth flat, I then turn it into a globe. Listen, listen. No, no, I'm not going to listen. That's it. Let's go to the end of the argument. No, no, listen, listen, I've got to turn that flat measurement into a globe. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't even started. Yeah, you have. You started by measuring Earth flat. Well, I have this, and I'm not just mentioning Bacon because he's here. And I'm not trying to drag you in, Bacon, or anything like that. I'm just mentioning you because we've had numerous conversations and about the elevation angle and horizontal and sea level. And and I think, if I'm correct, you're convinced that, you know, this can be done using the surface of Earth and you believe it's a globe. For the audience's benefit, that was a total lie. He deliberately did that to entice him into a discussion. Total lie. Well, that's Bacon who's in the room now, but uh, he does sort of... But you, you get to a point, well, it's an elevation angle, sea level. You know, you can mention tangents, which hasn't got uh, GPs because it's not the surface of Earth. You will be using a horizontal straight level line at all times. There's actually no representation of curvature on your side for curvature measurement it's all uh, uh, horizontal level flat angles and that's my point it's not just my point it's it's just how it how it is it's how it works yeah for everyone exactly we all start with flat earth measurements doesn't matter if you've got a globe belief or not I said this right at the beginning of the live show. It leaves them in a position where they either decry that measurement, which is the starting point of their globe faith, in which case, well, you're denying the base premise of your globe faith because you need to start this with a measurement of a flat Earth. That's how it's done. So if you don't do that, you've got nothing to start your globe claim with. Okay, well, I will start it with this flat Earth measurement then. Well, then we've just measured Earth flat and that's the end of the debate. Thanks for coming. Goodbye. Well, no, it's not really a measurement. It's not really Earth. Well, how are you going to be proving Earth's sphericity with this flat Earth measurement if it's not the ground and not a measurement? Oh, well, it is a measurement. It is the ground and it is flat. Yes, yeah, the end of the argument again, isn't it? You're caught between a rock and a hard place now. Either decry the base of your measurements of a globe, as you propose they are, flat, in which case you haven't got a starting point for your claim, or accept that you've just measured Earth flat. We just won't let you carry on and make a globe claim with it like we used to 10 years ago. And we, and us, well, the, the process, we, we are actually utilising Earth. We're not denying that. It's it's actually used, sea level, you know, to and from Polaris, using the surface Earth. We're not, we're not claiming we're using a tangent line or anything else. It's the surface of Earth that's being uh, measured. Whereas on the globe side, we were trying to prove a globe. They're not mentioning any usage of a globe or curved Earth. It's... Same as us, horizontal, flat, level, angles, two straight lines. So they're using exactly the same um, reasoning and met methods, but they think that's a globe when there's no mention of a globe or proof that it is a globe in the measurement. If you get what I'm saying. I broke up there, my phone's playing up a little bit. So the earth yeah. is actually flat and it is measured like that. Now you were loud and clear. I think you just uh, stunned everybody into silence. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so it is flat and that's how it's measured. That's how uh, celestial navigation works. That's how mapping works. That's how latitude is measured. I just want to hear somebody from the globe side explain how I'm wrong and and, ex, and expand on, well, no, it's, we're not actually using elevation angles because we can't on a globe, but we do this instead. 
this is how we do it, but, which they can't do because it's not a globe. We know it's measured flat, but you don't hear any excuses or um, explanations for globe measurement, drop over distance. They all want to be using horizontal tangent lines, levels, angles, elevation angles. They'll deny what an elevation angle is. Well, they usually go to They'll misrepresenting it and then claim that it's not celestial navigation, but it's trigonometry, as Mr. Anderson was doing, unknown, unbeknownst to him. But Neil spotted it, fair play to him. But hold on, we, this is celestial navigation. Would we be doing trigonometry? And they found out said no. Because then they can talk about the heights of stars and compare and false dichotomy from there. So it's a red herring, really. I, it was it the other day. I, I was on ex explaining the latitude and the how it's measured from Polaris at sea, elevation angles, and someone said, "Well, it's got nothing to do with that. It's a, it's a linear relationship." I said, "Well, I'm not talking about relationships. I'm talking about measurements." So I asked him to pull the definition up of linear anyway, and that's got something to do with a straight line anyway, nothing to do with curvature, um, but. Yeah, it, well, it's a relationship. We're, we're talking about measurements, not how something's related to something. We're selling you how it's physically measured. From one point to another point tomorrow, along Nathan? the surface of Earth. Sorry? Sorry, Wanda, I thought you was finished. Are you in uh, politics tomorrow, Nathan? It's gone for a coffee, I think. Hey, uh, I think he's gone. You know Humble? Yeah, Humble, yeah. I know Humble very well. Yeah, Humble was, uh, we wanted to see if we could arrange uh, so that both a Glober and a Flat Earther would kind of try to solve a fix together and see where, at which point in the process they would do things differently. So I have volunteered from the Globe side and... I know, I, we need a, someone from the Flat Earth side to do a fix. You know anybody who could volunteer for that? Uh, what, what are you going to be using, a Mariner sextant? Uh, no, we're going to be starting with the angles and we're going to try to do a fix with it. Wait, yeah, starting what, what with the Flat Earth using? measurements and then doing a fix. So you're starting after the measurements have been taken off a of Flat Earth then, like McToon did in his challenge. Sure. Well, you've already measured a flat Earth, haven't you? For the angles that oh, you'll be using. Two, yeah. So you're starting with angles you've already measured. The measurements of a flat Earth. This is like I just said a second ago, like Toon did in his challenge. Start with the angles so you don't mention that you've got the angles off a of flat Earth and hope that what? A full dichotomy will follow. You've already measured a flat Earth for the angles that you're starting with. You're jumping sure. the gun and skipping past angles, mate. I'll concede to that, yeah. Then can we see how a Glober and a Flat Earth would do it? Once we've it? already measured it flat, we don't need to do anything, Bacon. We've already measured Earth flat for the angles that you want to start figuring out if it's a globe or flat with them. We measured Earth flat for the angles you want to start with. Those numbers were acquired by way of measuring a baseline that is flat. That's how they're measured. But you want to, what, take those flat Earth measurements forward to see if they're flat? They definitely flat bacon. What part of this don't you understand? Do you think by brushing past the fact that you've measured Earth flat and starting with the measurements that were flat, it will somehow overcome that you've measured it flat? I don't really understand why you would be doing that. Why do you want to move forward with flat Earth measurements to inquire about the nature of Earth when you've already got flat Earth measurements to start with? That seems really stupid. Yeah, I'll see you down there since I'll clarify. The goal here is not to determine whether the Earth is flat or not. The goal here is to see how a flat earther would do a fix compared to how a glober would do a fix. Oh, okay. So, so saying uh, we don't have no, to do anything. The glober can't do a fix. He can't exactly get the same angle way. measurements from a globe bacon. Do you understand that you can't have a curved adjacent when you're measuring an angle? Do you understand that? How a glober would do it. How the hell the does the glober get these bleeding angles, bacon? How does he get them? 
I know you wanted to start with the flat earth angles. Well, let's see how a Glober gets those angles. How does he get them? Oh, he doesn't. He needs a flat earth for them. The Glober won't be doing anything with these angles. We've already proven a flat earth with them. Why would you be asking what a Glober would do with flat earth angles? When I can just say, how does he get them? He doesn't. Asking. That's the end of the discussion. I'm not asking what a Glober would do with flat earth. You just did. I heard I'm you. actually asking. You said what a Glober would do to, to get their out. fix. What they do with the angles, you mean? Off a of flat earth to get their fix. What a Glober would do with those flat earth angles, Bacon, right? I'm, I'm not trying to figure out what a Glober would do. I already have that. I'm trying to figure out what a flat earth would do. No, you, you haven't got that, you liar. Bacon, you have not got what a Glober can do with flat earth angles. He can't do anything with them. He can't get them. Why are you telling me that you already know what a Glober will do with <laughs> flat earth only angles? He can't get them. You seem to have ignored me. Okay, sure. Let's focus on the part that we can do then. So if it's possible well, okay. for a flat earth... Yeah, we can get flat earth angles. The, the ones you wanted were flat earth. Let's focus on what we can do. We can get an angle measurement off a of flat earth. That's what we do do. Not what we can. We did. You did. You started with them. Then you started telling me how your Glober, you already know what he can do with them. He can shove them up his ass because they're measured off a flat plane, Bacon. Okay, so let, let, let him shove up off his ass and let's see what the flat earth do with the, the angles. Uh, we the can navigate angles. with them. Can we see We that? can navigate with them. Yeah, yeah you can't as a Glober yeah. because that, you can't even get the angles, Bacon. Bacon, you can't even get those angles. How is a Glober going to get those angles? Oh, they, you can't because the Earth is flat. So that's that it. So it's the end of the bleeding discussion. Why do we need to put these two two different groups of people, one being an idiotic glober that can't get the angles? You just told me you knew what they'd do with them. No, no. They can shove them up their ass. They certainly won't be navigating with them if they're a glober because they can't get them, Bacon, as you just conceded. So, Bacon, based on the fact that a glober cannot get these angles, he won't be doing a damn thing with them. If he does do something with them, he'll be doing it on a flat earth, the one he got the angles from. We'll all be doing that, Bacon. A Glober, that's just some fantastical idiocy that you think can be ascribed to these flat earth angles. They can't be. I hope that's clear. Oh, what is that clear to me is how, yeah, well, how exactly would a flat earther do a fix? Because I haven't seen that. So you're, you're to... just rinsing and repeating yeah, that, Bacon. You Humboldt... seem to be asking the same question without giving me a slightest bit of concession. I oh, know I did get a concession. I yeah, you no, know, I did get it, didn't I? I give you. No, a we concession. could only get them flat. Now I think pretty sure I did get that concession from you. You still seem to be rinsing and repeating what we would do with these flat Earth only angles. We were in a flat Earth debate. Once we establish that they're only acquirable off a flat plane, that's it. That's the end, Bacon. We don't need to do anything else. We don't need to put them before some stupid idiot like Mattoon to see what he can do with them to get a fix and compare that with how I would get a fix with them because they're both flat earth angles that are going to be used, aren't they? I'm just telling you, Humble's interesting. You're just not acknowledging me. Do you don't seem to be acknowledging me. They're both flat earth angles, sure, aren't sure, they, Bacon? I'll, I'm acknowledging that. Well, let's sure, hear it yeah. clear. I'll say it, then you respond to it. There's no need to go any further forward with what a Glober would do with these flat Earth only angles. They are ipso facto only acquirable if Earth is flat, aren't they, Bacon? Sure. That's the end of the discussion. Welcome to flat Earth. Earth is measured flat. But that you will be discussion. using that flat Earth angle measurement, and so will Toon or any other globe numpties that need a flat Earth to get these angles. For you to suggest that oh, I might not be able to get a fix where a Glober can, because that's what you inferred. Wrong! As you've just conceded, will absolutely unequivocally require a flat earth to get them. Everyone. Even if you've got a delusional Dunning-Kruger globe belief, and you think you can work with these non-comporting to globe angles that must be measured flat. Now, you can worry about what your stupid idiot side that are on a globe will do with those flat earth angles. I just stop the discussion and say, we just measured f a flat earth bacon. Don't need to do anything else. And you understand that now. So welcome to flat earth. We, uh, we measure earth flat bacon for these angles. Yeah, thanks for the welcoming. Um... And I still think how it would be interesting in seeing how a flat Earth does a fix, even if I'm convinced that the Earth is flat. I don't think it changes the fact that Humboldt's trying to find a flat Earth that can show how a fix is done. 
Are you retarded? Can I yes, he something? is. Yeah, go ahead, QB. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm just asking, is he retarded? I don't think I, I, don't I am. Sorry, get, I don't think I am. Sorry. You're asking our flat earth angle to work on a flat earth. Don't you That's understand this? All right, listen, let's try this. Let's say you're a glober and you're a navigator on a ship. Take us step by step what you're going to do. But you you just get been called up to work. You're driving along. Then what happens? I'll pick up my phone, take a look at my GPS readings, and call it a day. Oh, the ground positioning, the ground positioning systems that use the Cartesian coordinate system. Thanks. Welcome now, to Flat Earth. Get, welcome to Flat Earth Thank there, you. by the so, way. So you use your um, phone that references Flat Earth grid system. Well done. So <laughs> you, you proved the Flat Earth with your phone and your GPS then. Did you think that had something to do with the globe? Because it's using a Cartesian grid system, as QE just pointed out to you. Welcome to Flat Earth. I Thanks think I that. already was a flat earth. I already couldn't see the flat earth yeah, like five is. minutes ago. Yeah, thanks. So, yeah. you're a yeah, navigator. That doesn't Try answer my along. initial question. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Try to follow along. So, you get to the harbor. You get out your car. Get onto the boat. Then what happens? What do you mean? You're on the boat. What do I mean? What do I mean? You're the ship's navigator. You're responsible for the navigation of the ship. The ship is is sailing from Portugal to Corpus Christi. Okay? okay. You're on the boat. I'll put you on the boat. I'll make it easy now. You're on the boat. You're in your office. What do you do now? Regarding a fix? Want me to do a fix? No, he's Not asking you what you do that. next. What do you do first? You're in the oh port. You're on the boat. You've just got out know. of the taxi. You put, never... your, you put your bags on the deck. You've got to your office. You're the navigator. What are you going to do? What's the first thing you're going to do? I've never been on a boat. I have no clue, no idea what's the first thing. So why would you be asking us this? Do you think you're in some sort of position to assess the validity of our answer when we establish a fix, when you don't know the first thing you'd do at port? Literally. I didn't ask that. Yeah, you what did. I ask is how you do the fix. Yeah, no, you don't no, know no. that. I'll just say it you again, Bacon. You don't what seem you to take me, in what people say to you. You, you don't seem to be taking in what I've said to you. You seem to be ignoring it completely. Those are different You don't questions. seem to be taking in what I've just put to you. Why would you feel you're in a position to quiz us on how to get a fix when you quite literally do not know the first thing you would do at port? I First do. of all, I don't, need the end. I don't need to have an answer to ask a question. I would just want to see your answer. Yeah, we're assessing whether or not you are in a position to assess whether or not we would know what we're talking about when we satisfy your question about how a fix is acquired. So to test whether or not you'd be in a position to assess our understanding of it, as you seem to feel fit to ask, we're challenging you based on whether or not you understand this process. QE has put to you once, I have repeated twice, what would you do when you got to the boat? What's the first thing you do? I know the answer. QE obviously knows the answer. It seems you don't know the answer, but think you can assess whether or not we'd know how to acquire a fix or not. You don't know the first thing you do, do you, Bacon? Well, I'll answer you if I, get, I can get a complete sentence. Well, I'll ask it a fourth time, and we'll see if we get a forthcoming answer. What's the first thing you do when you get to the port, like QE asked? Fourth time. Yeah, I'll try to answer if I can get a full sentence out without being interrupted. Is that possible? If it's not an answer to the question, it'll be immediately cut off. If you don't tell me the first thing you do, you'll be cut off. If you start talking about something that isn't the answer to this question, you will immediately be cut off. What's the first thing you do well, at Port Bacon? Judge of that. I'll just repeat the question as we add a little bit of a subversion technique. So I'll reiterate it for a fifth time because that wasn't the answer to the question. So I'm going to have to repeat it a fifth time. What's the first thing you do when you get to Port Bacon? Now you've had time to ask around and Google search it. Well, it's not my problem if you don't consider that my answer Doesn't seem to be an answer to my question. question. That's the answer. Doesn't I seem to be an answer. It. Doesn't seem to be the first thing we do at Port. He doesn't seem to know, ladies know, and gentlemen. Right? He seems to maybe want to moan about how he's not getting a full sentence when he's not answering. 
So I'll ask a sixth time and then we'll just tell him he's an idiot and he's in no position to assess whether or not we know how to get a fix or not. He doesn't know the first thing to do at port. What's the first thing you'd do at port, Bacon? As the ship's navigator. Maybe you're not getting a full enough opportunity to answer our questions, Bacon. Maybe he's just put himself on server deafen. After a long, protracted silence, he's put himself on server deafen. Oh, right, Bacon. Well, while you're on server deafen, because I know you're not listening to me, I'll point out you'd measure your height above the sea, the sea level. Are you back, back off server deafen, are you there, Bacon? Oh, no, he's back on server deafen. <laughs> Don't want to hear it, right, Bacon? No, you're in absolutely no position to assess the validity of whether or not we'd know how to get a fix versus your Glober, who can't even get an angle, as you conceded. So why would I be asking or answering any questions of you in terms of how fixes acquired when you don't know the first thing about it, clearly? Oh, but you wouldn't be listening to this, would you, Bacon? Because you're a completely reasonable person. Back off, back off server deafen. Read? On to server deafen. He's a complete retard. Essentially, what he's doing is he's acting like he's the math professor, and he wants he's going to evaluate our differential equation exam, but we query him just to make sure that he's the math professor and he can't add one and five together. Yeah. That, that's what this situation is. But he'll come in and challenge us so that for the audience's benefit, Oh, these guys might not know what they're talking about. My globe friend knows exactly what he's talking about and can definitely calculate these flat earth angles with a globe. I already know the outcome of our global will use flat earth angles. I just want to see if you can do it. Well, let's see if you know whether or not we could do it based on your understanding of this process. What's the first thing you'd do? Oh, I'll go on server deafen after a protracted silence that demonstrates I haven't got an answer. After moaning repeatedly, I'm not getting a full chance to speak. Because that was an answer to the fifth rendition, wasn't it? Yeah, this is the prick level that we have to deal with. Pricks. I don't care. I got what I needed. He absolutely unequivocally confirmed Earth is measured flat for elevation angles. He can't deny it. His globe's based on it. Ah, he's not a prick. He's a pretender clown. That's correct. I'm amazed that he still comes in here with this nonsense. What's the first thing you do at Port Bacon? Uh, sir, I don't know. I have never been to a boat. Why the hell are you asking us about how you get fixes then? If you don't know what you're doing, how would you be able to assess us on I whether I told you there from the beginning. And there's you talking straight through the middle of my question. I'll say it again second time. He didn't like the question, so he had to talk through the end of it. I'll try that again without Bacon it's interrupting me. Maybe you'd like to go on server deaf and Bacon, because obviously talking through me is preferable. Why would you be in any position to assess whether or not we knew what we were doing then, if you don't know? And you've never been on a boat is your excuse for not knowing what the slightest... I haven't got the slightest clue what to do. Why would you assess this is my yeah, question. Yeah, I said that from... oh, I thought you were done. I never know when your question is done, so can you tell me when you're That's done? That's not an answer. Why would you answering? assess us when you don't know the first <laughs> thing about it? Third time. Because uh, one thing doesn't... Sorry, I thought you were done. Now, I was pointing out it's the third rendition of the same question. This will be the fourth. Why would you be in any position to assess whether or not we can do it when you don't know the first thing about it? Fourth rendition. I don't see how one thing has to do with the other one. Well, if you're going to assess me and if I know how to do maths, you'd expect you to know how to do maths. You don't. You don't know how to do navigation. You don't know the first thing about it. I'm not going to assess whether you know it. We just want to see how you do it. That's all. You want to see how I do it. What other words? Assess whether or not I can do it. Yeah, by being clever with words, you're making yourself seem that little bit more stupid, Bacon. We all know what you want to do. You want to put us in a position for you to be the teacher and assess whether or not we can comport with your little test of whether or not we can do it. You're in no position to assess it. You don't know the first thing about it, Bacon. You're a retard. As I said, I'm not going to assess if you can do it. Well, then it stop or... asking I then. Just see then how don't you ask. Do it. Next time, shut your bleeding mouth. Yeah? 
You're useful to me, Bacon. Actually, I'm you asking you were, yeah, I didn't know you didn't know I was talking, did you, Bacon? Did you not know I'd finished in the start of that sentence? Was that you not knowing that I'd started a sentence and was in the middle of it when you started talking? Maybe it's my problem here. No, Bacon. You're just an idiot. Yeah. 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 You did concede yeah. how yeah. angles will be acquired off a flat plane for both models. Obviously, they won't be usable on a curved surface. They're straight lines. We got that concession from you because it's unequivocally required to believe in a globe. Very useful when you, my opponent, who believes he's on a globe, concedes we must measure Earth flat. Because we do. That's all yeah, I got from you and that's all I needed. It I'm wasn't worried. necessarily an invitation for you to start talking through me, but you took it as one. Yeah? That's because of zealotry, yeah, Bacon. So I still haven't finished the I'm same sentence that so you still feel it's your turn to talk through. Nobody's invited you to do anything. Nobody's asked you a question. The questions you were asked multiple times, sometimes five, sometimes six times, you, you thought you'd answer different questions about whether or not you were getting an opportunity to talk. Now, me not even having taken a breath, you've interrupted me three times. Yeah? Meanwhile, I got my concession from you. Earth measured flat for angle. The one you wanted to start with when you started making your assessment. Oh, no, it's not an assessment. It's just me testing whether or not you can do this. <laughs> it's gone on server, Deafen. <laughs> These people are cowards. They don't like getting a proper tongue lashing from me. They'd literally rather stick their fingers in their ears. <laughs> It. The tables have turned. We're laughing at you now, Bacon. We're laughing at you. You can go back on server deafen while we laugh at you, if you like. We're laughing at how pathetic you are. Yeah, good lad. Back on server deafen so you don't have to hear how stupid you are. Because it's painful. Yeah, me pointing out how I got my concession about Earth being measured flat by you, the globe-believing numpty. It's absolutely required by you. It'd just be best if we start with those angle measurements. If that's the starting point, we can assess whether or not you can get a fix with them. And I already know a globe can definitely get a fix with them. You lost badly, Bacon. Earth's measured flat. And you conceded to that. Thank you. Hey, I haven't yeah, got it's your in my in name, Bacon the Flat Earther. Yeah, I still wanted to see how a Flat Earther will do it. Well, go and do You're it. Retarded. You go and do it then. You are one. I could only do that when I was a globe. Now I don't. I can't uh, use the sphere anymore because I don't think that's how the so earth he is. Couldn't, he, it's You're like he retard. doesn't like listening to what I've put to him. You couldn't use those flat earth angles on a globe. You couldn't get them in the first place. It's like you don't listen, Bacon. Maybe you like to stick your fingers in the ears while I repeat it again. Because it seems like it went in one ear and out the other. Server deafen. Should we take it slowly, Bacon, or would you want to stick your fingers in your ears again? Go ahead. We're getting angles off a plane, Bacon. You can't get them from a globe. That's why you started with them. Thinking you were clever by starting with angles measured off a flat plane. But they were measured off a flat plane. Your globe couldn't get them in the first place to be able to function with them. This is the third time I've gone through this with you, Bacon. I don't know why you're telling me that I've said I'm a flat earther already. So I'm not sure why you're trying to make that point for a flat earther to a flat earther. You are a flat earther. You conceded that you measured Earth flat for the angles. I got that on recording. I'll play it back at nausea. It'll be a nice little clip. Yeah, man. I'm saying that right now. Flat earther. So why, why are you attacking the globe for so me? When you I, suggest that you I need a flat earther to so do this, doesn't make sense. you go do it. I put, that's the second time I've said that to you. Third, I think. Well, I turns out I can't. I tried to do... I tried well, then you're so, stupid. Uh, so so you're treating, stupid and treating. ignorant and you're going to bleat at me because you don't know how to do it. Go and learn, you dumb idiot. You're telling me because you're incapable oh, of doing this as a stupid flat earther that doesn't understand this, that somehow I've got to educate you. With it. No, Bacon. Just because you're a dumb flat earther doesn't mean you get to come and <laughs> demand that we are testable in something you don't understand. You're in no position to do that. That's still the case, Bacon. You're off mute with your line flashing while I'm telling you what's what. You're just a dumb flat earther now, Bacon. That's all you are. Doesn't mean you get to make demands of us to educate you. No, son. Go and learn how it's done if you've done how to do it as a flat earther. Now you are one. Yeah, it just makes you ignorant. Okay? Stupid flat earther. That's you, Bacon.
Go ask McBugger Eater. Well, if uh, if not knowing how to do Celestial Navigation makes me a dumb Flat Earther, I want to see a Flat Earther that is not a dumb Flat Earther. Oh, well, then right. you can pay that attention no, to the show how... daily. Learn on Flat Earth Debate how we get fixes. It's on screen now for my audience. It goes by on constant screenshots. And we explain them at nausea. But up until now, yeah, but you were a over-aggrandized, ball-believing Muppet, and now you're just a dumb flat earther who's very ignorant and needs to go back and learn this stuff. Yeah, we know, Bacon. It's just you positioned it like you were testing us. Yeah? What it actually transpires is you're just an ignorant flat earther. You know Earth's flat, because that's how we get the angles. For you back in the day to believe they work with the globe. Now suddenly it's all very hazy and you don't have to do it. Yeah, just ignorant and dumb. Flat Earther. Yeah, stupid Flat Earthers exist too. You're one of them now. Well done. Welcome to Flat Earth. It doesn't mean you're any less stupid. With that, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's after show possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of, uh, yeah, to see Discord and G Plus panels and all of you for making today's live show possible, after show possible, G Plus and Discord, smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. I've been Nathan Oakley and I will see you all in the next video.